meeting of council at 2 p.m. on Tuesday, the 9th of March, 2021. Uh, can I please remind members to switch your phones to silent for the duration of the meeting? Uh, in addition, can I refer you to protocols for remote meetings, um, which have previously been circulated, namely, your microphone should be switched to mute unless you speak in. The Democratic Service Officer will take a roll call at the start of the meeting of all members and officers present. Should you wish to ask a question or make a comment, can you please indicate either via the chat function or by raising your electronic hand via Teams? I'll assume that you've all read the paperwork before us today prior to the meeting. When speaking, can you please also introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Councillor Scott Jones, the Mayor of Neath Port Albert, and I'm now going to call upon Jane from Democratic Services to take the roll call, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Aubrey. Councillor Aubrey? Yes, yes, I'm here. Councillor Bamsey. Present, Jane. Councillor Causey. Councillor Causey. Councillor Clark. Present, Jane. Councillor Clement Williams. Present, Jane. Councillor Crowley. Present, Jane. Councillor Arthur Davis. Present, Jane. Councillor Nicola Davis. Present, Jane. Councillor Oliver Davis. Present. Councillor Ros Davis. Presenol. Present. Councillor Carlin Edwards. Uh, Jane, uh, I've had a message from mm -hmm. Carolyn a second ago saying that she's trying yeah. to get into the meeting but can't right. get into the meeting. Right, we'll, we'll try and get her in now. Um, Councillor Jimmy Evans. Presenno. Councillor Sean Freegard. <laughs> Present. Councillor Gosworthy. Present, Jane. Councillor Winford Griffiths. Windham Griffiths, present. Councillor Hale. Present, Jane. Councillor Sean Harris. Present. Councillor Mike Harvey. Yeah, present, Jane. Councillor Nigel Hunt. Councillor Nigel Hunt. Co sorry. Co Councillor Nigel Hunt. Right, I can hear you. Councillor Steve Hunt. I'm here, Jane. Councillor Jeremy Hurley. Present, thank you. Councillor Chris James. Present, Jane. Councillor Hugh James. Present, Jane. Councillor Chris Jones. Present, Jane. Councillor Doreen Jones. Present, Jane. Councillor Hugh Jones. Uh, present, Jane. Councillor Jane Jones. Present, Jane. Councillor Leanne Jones. Present, Jane. Councillor Scott Jones, present. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Keo. Present, Jane. Councillor Noyle. Councillor Noyle. Jane, he's given yeah. his apologies. He's had a, a, a urgent work related issue. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Hunt. Councillor Latham. Uh, yeah, I'm present, Jane. Can I, um, before you go on, Jane, I've had a message off Councillor Aaron Lockyer that he can't find an invite in, into today's meeting. If somebody could send him one, please. Yes, we we'll sort that out now. Thank you, Councillor Latham. Okay, Jane. Council Councillor Dean Lewis. Councillor Dean Lewis. Jane, Thank again, you. he has just messaged that to give his apologies. Uh, he's Thank you. Work. Thank you. Councillor Alan Llewellyn. Yeah, personal Jane, President. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I leave Councillor Lockyer now until we can resolve the problem. Councillor McGrath. Present, Jane. Councillor Miller. Present, Jane. Councillor Sandra Miller. Councillor Sandra Miller. Councillor Ridgian Mason. Present all. Councillor Del Morgan. Present all, Mr. Meyer. And can I please give my apologies for the latter part of the meeting because I have a medical appointment. Thank you. Councillor Pardison. Present. Councillor Penry. Present. Councillor Peters. Present. 
Phillips. Rebecca Phillips, sorry. Present. Present. Councillor Martin. Present. Councillor Mark Prothero. Present. Thanks, Jane. Councillor Mark Prothero. Councillor Mark Prothero. Present. Thanks, Jane. Councillor Purcell. Present. Councillor Percy. Present. Councillor Rahman. Present, Jane. Councillor P. A. Rees. Present, Jane. Councillor Renkis. Present. Councillor Reynolds. Present. Councillor Richards, A. J. Richards, Anthony Richards. Present, present all. Councillor Peter Richards. Present, Jane. Councillor Marcia Spooner. Present all, yeah. Councillor Anthony Taylor. Present, Jane. Councillor Rachel Taylor. Present. Councillor D. Whitelock. Present, thank you, Jane. Councillor Chris Williams. Present, thank you, Jane. Councillor Annette Wingrave. Present, Jane. Councillor Rob Wood. Present. Councillor Alwyn Woolcock. Present, all, Mr. Meyer. Right, if I can just check. Councillor Lockyer, are you present? Uh, I am, Jane, sorry, slight connection. Thank problem. you. That's fine, that's lovely. Uh, I'll go on to offices now. Uh, Karen Jones. Present. Craig Griffiths. Present. Howell Jenkins. Present. Hugh Jones. Present. Nicola Pierce. Present. Arlid Evans. Present. Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas. Uh, Andrew Jarrett. Present, Jane. Uh, Sheena, Sheena Reese. And Mike Shaw. Yes, present. And Stacey Curran. Is anyone else participating in the meeting now that I haven't called in the roll call? You know I'm here, Jane. Sean Warman. Yes, I've got you, Councillor Warman. Yes, no problem. Well, that's it, Mr Mayor. The roll call is completed. OK, thank you, Jane. Thanks very much. OK, members, therefore, we'll move now on to agenda item one, uh, Mayor's announcements. I'm pleased to announce nominations for the oh, St yeah. David Awards from Neath Port Albert. Yeah. That's... Can I ask members to ensure that your microphones are on mute, please? OK, returning to uh, Mayor's announcements, I'm pleased to announce nominations for the St. David Awards from Neath Port Albert. Uh, Ethan Hutchins from Port Albert, who rescued a drowning man uh, from a river in Carmarthen, Port Albert, has been nominated for a Young Persons Award. And Harrod Padgett Jones, a disability rights campaigner from Port Albert, has also been nominated, nominated for a Humanitarian Award. John Puzzy of Pontedowie has also been nominated for Humanitarian Award. He's a prominent housing campaigner and was director of Shelter Cymru Wales for more than 30 years until his retirement in October 2020. Also, I'm sure that Council will join me uh, to congratulate the five members of Neath Port Albert's Youth Council who won a mock election hosted by the Senedd as part of the Vote 16 week. The mock political party was named uh, Equal Wales and received 41% of the total vote. The five young people involved were Stella Oren, St Joseph's Catholic School and Sixth Form Centre, Isabel Williams, Kumtawi Community School, Lola There, Kumtawi Community School, Bonnie Connor, Cumbromble, and Bethan Nicholas Thomas, Kumtawi Community School. Many congratulations to you all. Members, we'll now move to agenda item two, members' interests. Can I ask if there are any interests to declare? If so, please can you indicate by raising your electronic hand via Teams or can you indicate via the chat function? Uh, in return, the Democratic Service Officer will then forward an electronic version of the Declaration of Interest form uh, asking for you to complete and email back to the relevant officer. So can I therefore ask under uh, agenda item two if there's any members interest to declare, please. Mr Mayor. Councillor Hunt. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see my hand up, but I'm, uh, it's not a declaration of interest. I'm having a terrible difficulty with my Wi-Fi again, uh, as was in Cabinet previously. So I'm, I'm making you aware that if my camera is not on, it's for that reason. And I just hope the council can hear me because uh, it's a, quite an important meeting today. But I, I just want to make you aware, it's not a declaration of interest, but if my camera is not on, it's because of that reason, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Hunt. Yeah, we'll be very mindful of that. Um, again, can I ask if there are any members in press? If, uh, if you can confirm, please, Jane. Councillor Harvey uh, has raised his hand. So, um... yeah, Mr Mayor, I've, I've done six uh, capital strategy and programme. CCTV is mentioned. Um, I work for South Wales Police, so I got interest there. Then item seven, revenue budget regarding the council tax settings mentions the Police and Crime Commission and again I work for South Wales Police. Uh, thank you Mr Mayor. Thank you Councillor Harvey. I think that that's the only one Mr Mayor. Thank you Jane. Okay members therefore we'll move on to agenda item three minutes of the previous meeting of Council. I refer to the minutes of the previous meeting of Council held on the 27th of January 2021. Before I move confirmation of the accuracy uh, can I ask if there are if there are any comments, uh, any comments or questions on the accuracy of the minutes, please? I can't see any, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I now move confirmation of the accuracy of the minutes. Can I please have a seconder, please? Uh, second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. If you do not indicate to the contrary, it'll be assumed that you're in favour of the recommendation. Uh, can I now call upon Jane, who will confirm with each member who has indicated whether they are against or wish to abstain? I can't see any indications, Mr Mayor, so the minutes have been approved. Thank you, Jane. OK, members, therefore, we'll move on to agenda item four, Capital Programme Monitoring Report 2020 to 2021. I now look to call upon the relevant Cabinet member, Council Carol Clement Williams, Cabinet Member for Finance, to introduce the agenda item four and five. Both reports were commended to Council from the Cabinet on the 8th of March. So, Councillor Carol Clement Williams, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> say this is agenda for agenda items uh, four and five capital and revenue budget monitoring reports for 2020 2021. Mr Mayor, Leader, uh, Deputy Leader and the Members of Council, the first two reports in front of you today provide an update in relation to the capital and revenue budgets for the current financial year. Turning first to the capital report, I'm delighted to report that despite the COVID-19 pandemic and everything we have faced over the last year, we will have delivered £65 million of capital projects this year. This is a remarkable achievement and I must pay testament to all officers and contractors who have made this possible. Mr Mayor, the report highlights a number of projects delivered this year, which as a council we should all be proud of. These include starting on site in Neath, where we are building a new retail and leisure complex, bringing visitors and footfall back into the town centre. <coughs> Excuse me. Progressing with the new 29 million replacement comprehensive school at Kevin Sison, which is on budget and three months ahead of schedule with occupancy due in June. We started on site in Longford building a new primary school to replace the three current sites at Abbey Primary. We're on site finishing the final phase of the transformation of Ascol Gavin Estlavera Brodir. We finished the redevelopment of the former metal box site in Nice. Mr Mayor, I could go on and on. Turning now to the revenue budget monitoring report, the last year has been difficult. However, during that period, on top of the day job, this council has paid over £40 million of grants to businesses to support them through the COVID pandemic paid over 3.5 million directly into the bank accounts of parents of children entitled to free school meals, some 5,000 children, set up test, 
trace and protect service from scratch, administered Welsh Government schemes to support care workers and members of the public required to self-isolate. Successfully reclaimed almost £20 million from the Welsh Government Hardship Fund. Taking all of these together, the Council will have incurred around £70 million of extra costs with the majority being funded by the Welsh Government. Mr Mayor, I am delighted to be able to report that despite all of these challenges, this Council's re revenue budget is now projected to underspend by £1.9 million. It is, it is proposed that this underspend be transferred to general reserves in case we need to call upon it in the future. I would like to say at this point that an underspend of £1.19 million isn't something that happens by accident. It happens as a result of almost forensic financial management by my fellow cabinet members, chief executive, corporate directors and officers right across the council. This really is a truly remarkable team effort. Um, I am so proud of all of our staff within Neath Potalba Council who have stepped up to the mark during these extraordinary times. So, in conclusion, Mr Mayor, <clears throat> I'm delighted to be bringing these two reports to Council today. They contain some, some, fa some fantastic good news stories, not just for members of Council, but for residents, families and businesses across the entire County Borough. Mr Mayor, I have no hesitation in commending the recommendations included in these reports to Council. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Cabinet Member. I've received a couple of uh, indications. Uh, firstly, I'm going to call on uh, Councillor Alan Llewellyn, followed by Councillor Steve Hunt. Councillor Llewellyn, please. Do, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Do you have a Mr. Mayor? Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and councillors and council officers and members of the public that have joined our meeting. Uh, firstly, I want to thank Mr Howell Jenkins and his team, all council staff that have contributed to the process and also the cabinet members uh, for their hard work in preparing this budget and fellow councillors for questions in scrutiny committees over the last few months. I also want to thank all the residents of Neath Portal who have taken the time to respond to the budget consultation or to contact their elected members to give their views. I hope that we have a thorough and respectful debate on the budget and council tax this afternoon. And whatever budget is eventually set, I will want assurances that it will be fairly applied across the whole of the county borough, regardless of which ward which political party represents those communities. This has been a very difficult year for the authority and these are very challenging circumstances in which to set a budget. But they are very difficult times too for the communities and residents after a year of pandemic restrictions, lockdowns and job uncertainty. This comes on top of years of austerity and cuts in council services which have affected the environment and quality of life of all our communities. There are elements to welcome in this budget. At least we are not facing actual new cuts to services for the first time in many years. Yet despite the public consultation response, which shows overwhelming concern about the level of council tax, we are being asked to approve a budget that will increase council tax yet again by 2.75%. The Labour Administration have acknowledged the concern, in fairness, by reducing the recommended increase from 3.75% to 2.75%, but I will still leave Neath Portalabot with the third highest council tax in Wales by a very large margin. The public consultation reflects the palpable sense of unfairness that our council tax is so much higher than all of our neighbouring councils, which end Powys, Conda Cannon Tav, Swansea, Carmarthenshire, when our services have been cut year by year. 
this has been the same situation since Leith Patalbot was created in the local government reorganisation of 1995-96, a quarter of a century. Always the highest or third second highest in Wales, despite the desperate need of... So Councillor Llewellyn, Councillor Llewellyn, can I interject a minute? Um, you are on the wrong uh, uh, agenda item. Uh, th this is with regards to agenda item four. Um, reference to council tax is a li little bit later on uh, in the meeting. So, so can I ask that any questions are focused on uh, on the item four, please? Yes, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do, yeah, thank you. I do appreciate it. I, I haven't got the. I haven't. I'm not able to do up the agenda on the same iPad as it means to contribute to the meeting. So, I, I, I apologize for my mistake, and um, I apologize in advance for to. to to, to 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 members, they will have to listen to me saying the same thing again a bit later in the meeting, um, and and I, I'll, I'll put in my request to be able to speak later on uh, when it's the proper time, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. No problem. Thank you, Councillor Llewellyn. Uh, Councillor Steve Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have a question on this item, on the relative item, if I may. Uh, on page twenty-one of the report. Uh, you will notice uh, uh, excellent news, as uh, the, the company member for finance have said. Capital investment is always excellent news in this council, and has been for years. And I've always been a massive supporter as a councillor and a member of the communities we represent in in the development of projects and 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 so forth going forward. But on page twenty one, as I mentioned. I think um, I'd like to ask a question that back in August 2019, the council was awarded a £1.8 million to undertake works at Kevin Coyd. In broad terms, the con this consisted of an entrance way, car parking, a new timber visitor centre, a play area and a heritage interpretation within the existing heritage centre. Um, I believe at the time £1 million was match funding from this authority, uh, which was proposed then, but I, my understanding it is now 800000 This money isn't showing today in the report. Uh, could I have an explanation for this? Because what I see in the report for Kevin Coy is a 200000 regeneration for the landscape park. So I, I would like a, a better understanding of where or what has happened to this funding today, if I possibly could, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. I'm going to call on a uh, call upon our Chief Executive, uh, Mrs. Jones, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And Mr. Jenkins might want to come in and just add in terms of what's happened with the actual budget lines um, on this item, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Hunt is quite right. The council did secure funding to develop the site at Kevin Coyd, and there was match funding identified in the council's budgets to support that development. Unfortunately, for technical reasons, the initial proposal is not able to go forward. So we have agreed to meet on the 13th of April, Mr. Mayor, to talk with Councillor Hunt and the local member, Councillor Sean Harris, to look at how we might be able to bring some alternative proposals for Kevin Coyd. So, so broadly, uh, Mr. Mayor, that's what's happened since the initial budget lines were introduced into the budget. But in terms of the specifics, I'm sure Mr. Jenkins may want to just comment on the actual funding situation. Thank you, Chief Executive. Director of Finance, please. Thank, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, uh, just to confirm that originally there was £1.8 million pounds worth of specific grants uh, due from the European uh, uh, funds due to this project. Um, they were required all to be spent by the end of March this year, and as a result of them not being able to uh, progress uh, within that timeline, um, we can't, um, <clears throat> we're not entitled to draw down any of that <coughs> uh, funding. Um, and, and that is for the Welsh Government and uh, uh, to actually reinvest in uh, other projects. In terms of the £800,000 that um, uh, Councillor Hunt mentioned as our match funding, that is uh, being uh, re-transferred into the other regeneration uh, pot 
for redistribution to other projects as part of the capital program report, which which follows uh, this one uh, on another agenda item, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. And um, as as members are aware, that capital program includes an annual uh, contribution of about two million pounds towards uh, regeneration projects. Uh, so should there be an alternative project developed uh, in due course, then uh, alternative funding will be able to uh, be provided for match funding purposes at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Director. I've received no further indications on the item four. Uh, can I therefore refer members to the recommendation on page 18 of the agenda item four, Capital Programme Monitoring Report 2020 to 2021. Uh, can I now please ask for a proposer? Proposed, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And a seconder? I'll second, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, Thank I you. couldn't get my, uh, my speaker to work then. Yeah, I'll second, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much. OK, can I advise members, if you do not indicate to the contrary, it'll be assumed that you're in favour of the recommendations. Uh, can I ask Jane to confirm that being the case, please? I can see no indications to the contrary, Mr. Mayor. So that recommendation has been approved. That's great, thank you. And uh, agenda item five, we we'll therefore move on to agenda item five, budget update and monitoring report 2020 to 2021. We've taken questions and comments on both item four and five. Um, can I now therefore refer members to recommendation on page 39 of the report? Uh, can I ask for a proposal, please? Proposed, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And a seconder, please. I second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Can I remind members, if they do not indicate to the contrary, it'll be assumed that you're in favour of the recommendations. Can I ask Jane to confirm that this is the case, please? Ms. Mayor, I can see no indications to the contrary, so that uh, recommendation has been approved. Thanks very much, Jane. OK, therefore, we'll move on to agenda item six, capital strategy and capital programme 2021-2022 to 2023-2024. Uh, I now like to call upon uh, Councillor Carol Clement Williams, um, the Cabinet Member for Finance, to introduce the report, agenda item six and seven. Both reports were again commended to Council from Cabinet held on the 8th of March. So I call upon the Cabinet Member for Finance, Councillor Clement Williams, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, again, this is agenda, agenda items 7 and 8, Capital and Revenue Budget Setting 2021-22. Mr Mayor, Deputy Leader and Members of Council, Setting our annual budget is one of the most important decision meetings for the Council as it sets the Council's priorities in terms of what we can afford to fund. Today's members of Council are being asked to approve both the capital and revenue budgets for next year, as well as set the Council tax. Taken together, these two budgets will see £460 million invested in day-to-day -day services across the county borough, as well as £80 million invested in a wide range of capital projects. That's over half a billion pounds invested in the local economy next year. If I start with the capital budget, members will note that the three-year programme details total investment of approximately £120 million. But as we get more projects approved, I expect this total to rise to over 150 million over three year period. I mentioned earlier some of the projects currently being delivered, so I, want, I won't repeat myself again. It would, however, be remiss of me not to mention the remarkable achievement in relation to the new comprehensive school being built in Kimla Neath. Mr Mayor, you will see from the report that the school is now actually due to start welcoming pupils through its doors three months ahead of schedule. Not just on time and on budget, but actually ahead of time on budget and during a global pandemic. I will now move on to the revenue budget for 2021-22. 
The Welsh Government settlement was again very welcomed. The Welsh average increase was 3.8% and we received 4.2%, the sixth best in Wales. Even with this settlement, we are still left with a shortfall of over £3 million when all inflationary and demand pressures are taken into account. Such a shortfall brings with it difficult choices in terms of closing the gap. The draft budget proposed closing this gap through a combination of measures, raising council tax by 3.75%, using 3.1 million of general reserve, whilst maintaining a contingency in the budget of 2.8 million. When we went out to public consultation on the draft budget, we received a large number of responses. 1,069 people responded to the online questionnaire. Two letters were received and there, were also a, there was also a petition. Without a doubt, the main issue raised was the proposed council tax increase. I'm pleased to be able to say we've been able to listen to this feedback and as a result the report in front of Council today actually proposes a 2.75% Council tax increase, a full 1% less than originally proposed. What does this actually mean for the taxpayer? Well, what it means is that 80% of our taxpayers will actually see council tax bills rise by less than £40 a year. Members of council should also note that over the last five years, this council's increase in council tax is the second lowest in Wales, over 6% lower than the Welsh average. Mr Mayor, there are also a number of other headlines within the report which I need to draw Council's attention to. There's a proposed inflation busting increase of 3.52% for our schools budgets, real money into classrooms to support teaching and learning as our youngsters return to normal school life. There's new investment of over 2 million into social services so we can best protect the most vulnerable in our society as we move into the pandemic recovery stage. A further two million will also be invested from our increase in the housing and social care specific grants. There's also an extra 1.6 million into visible services, the ones our residents and businesses see on a day to day basis. There are many others, but I won't, I won't read them all. Mr Mayor, the proposals I put forward to the Council today represent a fair balance between investment, use of reserves and an increase in council tax. I recommend the recommendations in the two reports to council. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, uh, cabinet, cabinet member. Um, I've received two indications. Uh, I'm going to call upon Councillor Alan Llewellyn, followed by Councillor Paddison. Councillor Llewellyn, please. Hello, Mr. Mayor, um, and obviously everybody's had a sneak uh, preview, uh, spoiler alert of uh, what I'm about to say, <laughs> and thank you for bringing me in at the at the correct time. Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Keith and Holloway, Sir Obion, and Lord Elkahoyd. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, council, fellow councillors, council officers, and members of the public that have joined our meeting. Firstly, I want to thank Mr. Howell Jenkins and his team, all council staff that have contributed, and also the cabinet members for their hard work in preparing this budget and fellow councillors for questions that they have raised in scrutiny committees over the last few months. I also want to thank all the residents of Neathford Talbot who have taken the time to respond to the budget consultation or to contact their elected members to give their views. I hope that we have a thorough and respectful debate on the budget and council tax this afternoon. And whatever budget is eventually set, I will want assurances that it will be fairly applied across the whole of the county borough, um, regardless of which ward or which political party represents those communities. This has been a very difficult year for the authority, and these are very challenging circumstances to set a budget. But they are very difficult times too for our communities and residents. 
after a year of pandemic restrictions, lockdowns and job uncertainty. This comes on top of years of austerity and cuts in council services, which have affected the environment and quality of life of all our communities. There are elements to welcome in this budget, at least we're not facing actual new cuts to services. Yet despite the public consultation response, which shows overwhelming concern about the level of council tax, we are being asked to approve a budget that will increase council tax yet again by 2.75%. The Labour Administration, in fairness, have acknowledged the concern by reducing the recommended increase from 3.75% to 2.75%, but that will still leave Neath Portalibur with the third highest council tax in Wales by a very large margin. The public consultation reflects the palpable sense of unfairness that our council tax is so much higher than all our neighbouring councils, Regend, Powys, Thunder Cannon Tarf, Swansea and Carmarthenshire, when our services have been cut year by year. This has been the same situation since Leith Talbot was created in the local government organisation of 1995-96, a quarter of a century ago. Always the highest or second or third highest in Wales, despite the desperate need of so, so many of our communities. A situation created by the Tories originally, but unresolved by 20 years of Welsh Labour government or 25 years of Labour rule of this council. Recently in the Welsh Parliament, Adam Price, leader of High Cymru, proposed that the whole council tax system should be reformed and that this year, the year that has been so desperately difficult for the people of Wales, the Welsh Government should use part of its £600 million underspend, £600 million, to freeze the council tax for all Wales, as they are doing in Scotland, to give our people a break. This was turned down by the Welsh Labour Government, so it's up to us as a council to do the right thing for our people and our communities. That is why the Fly Cymru Group are proposing a freeze on Neath Portalbot's council tax for this exceptionally difficult year. We have examined the figures. We are always told that reserves are needed for a rainy day, while well, it's been metaphorically tipping down all year for our towns, villages and communities. Now is the time we need to help the people. In January, we were told that the draft budget would leave us with £11.5 million in reserves after a 3.75% increase in, in council tax. But that was before the government's final settlement. As you will see, our proposed amendment leaves us with a higher sum of 14.72 million, which is 4.69% of our revenue budget, at the very higher end of the range recommended by auditors of 3 to 5%. This is a costed proposal in an exceptional year. We have also shown in scrutiny questions that there is significant leeway in the revenue budget to give us added assurance that we can protect services and we should aim to build on that to better serve our communities in future years. The key part of our amendment reads Council Tax 2021-22 that the 2021-22 Bandy equivalent for Neath for Talbot County Borough Council will be £1,615.59, resulting in no increase in council tax as opposed to a 2.75% increase as detailed in the report, with a gap of 2.75% being funded from the general reserves, representing an additional sum of £2.14 million to be taken for 2021-22. Therefore, the total amount of general reserves needed to balance the budget is 5.24 mil 5 million, that is 3.1 million per original report plus 2.14 million. The resulting general reserves balance would be 14.72 14 million 
which is 4.69% of the revenue budget. I ask all members of council to support the Plaid Cymru amendment and I request a recorded vote on both the amendment and the final budget. Mr. Thank you, Councillor Llewellyn. Uh, we'll go back to that uh, uh, motion uh, in due course. Um, can, can I ask uh, or remind members, I suppose, that uh, we are discussing item <coughs> six uh, as it stands. Uh, so I've got a number of questions, observations from members who've indicated. So Councillor Suzanne Patterson next, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My um, understanding was that we were taking questions on six and seven. If if you disagree, I will wait till seven. Yeah, thank you. I would rather deal with item six first and then Fine. we would go on to, to seven, if that's okay, because it's too too. I understand, Mr. Mayor. I'll come back at item seven. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> comes, comes Mr. Mayor, just, just, just mention the Cabinet member did take six and seven together uh, and that's why I made my remarks that I did now but you know obviously I would accept your guidance on the way we deal with the agenda thank you yeah no, no problem I, I totally understand uh, and, and as I said with the cabinet member you rightly pointed out did deal with, with the two items uh, correctly together uh, but the recommendations are dealt with uh, different so with the indications that I've had I'm still on item six so um, I'm now going to call upon Councillor Steve and if his questions, observations is in reference to item six. Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So just for clarity, uh, the budget speech uh, for the what uh, Councillor Llewellyn had just uh, delivered is for item seven. Uh, if that's correct, then I will hold my uh, 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 address to council for item seven also then. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Yes, absolutely. And what uh, Councillor Llewellyn have said uh, uh, previously, uh, which is in reference to item seven, will be will be noted uh, because you've already spoken on that particular item. Um, yes. Yeah, so th thank you, uh, Councillor Nigel Hunt. Please, item six. We're on. Um. I Mr. Mayor, um, if we are dealing with six and seven now, I will, of course, um, I'll come back and, um, on item seven, if that's OK. Thanks very much. Uh, further indications, Councillor Lynette Purcell. Mine is also on item seven, thank you. Thanks very much. I see no further indications on item six, so I'm going to so call I upon the cabinet. Yeah, I'm going to call upon the cabinet member Sorry. to sum up. Thank you. Uh, sorry, um, I'd like to take some advice from Craig on this one. Although we uh, will take the vote separately, Councillor Llewellyn has already started the debate on item seven. Um, I'd just like to check with Craig, would it be appropriate to take the, all the questions now and then do the items set, uh, together? Or is it best just to take item six now and then move on to item seven? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griffiths, please. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cameron Williams. My advice on this occasion would be given that we have two separate recommendations. If we deal with recommendation six first, from what I understood, listening to members, the majority of the questions relate to the revenue budget, so it would make more sense for us to deal with it that way. But of course, Councillor Hoang's comments will be noted then as part of that process as well. So I, I would suggest we, we just continue with that process and deal with the recommendation now on recommendation okay. six. Fabulous. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Craig. Yep, no problem. Thanks very much. Can I therefore uh, refer members to the recommendations for agenda item six on page 39 of the report? Uh, can I ask for a proposal, please? Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I move. Thank you. And a seconder, please. I second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Can I therefore remind members that if you do not indicate to the contrary, it will be assumed that you are in favour of the recommendation. Uh, can I ask Jane to confirm this being the case, please? I can see no indications, Mr Mayor, so those recommendations have been approved. Thanks very much. OK, therefore we'll move on to agenda item seven, 
uh, revenue budget 2021 to 2022. Uh, I know that there are numerous questions and observation to go through. Uh, Councillor Llewellyn, I've already spoken uh, and, and put a, a motion forward, which will be dealt with uh, by Mr Griffiths in due course. So I'm therefore going to call upon Councillor Suzanne Patterson, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I have a question for um, Howell. Um, I apologise to members who are also uh, present today that are members of Cabinet Scrutiny, but it is the same question. But I obviously realise there are lots more people looking to, at today's meeting than were present uh, yesterday. So the budget report states that the council will use 3.1 million to balance the budget next year. And I was wondering if I could seek some clarification in simple terms of what that actually means using reserves to balance the budget. And Chair, um, I would also like to have uh, a follow-up question, if I may, depending on the answer. No problem. Director of Finance, please. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, as uh, uh, I mentioned in Cabinet scrutiny yesterday, um, I would uh, explain to members um, in terms of reserves what they really mean in your own personal uh, financial position is any savings that you have put into a building society or into uh, a bank account where you can draw on them when you need it. Uh, some of the things that you may need is to go on holidays, to buy your vehicle, uh, savings for different elements that you then draw on in future years or in emergencies when you need to, uh, need them to actually uh, manage the total amount you need to spend this year compared to the amount of money that you uh, earn. So in terms of the council, we are no different. We have got uh, some reserves. Um, uh, 19.8 million is the predicted amount at the beginning of uh, uh, April uh, uh, next month. And the current uh, proposal is to take 3.1 million from those reserves, which is uh, just over 15% uh, of our reserves out in, in, in one year. So that uh, hopefully, uh, Mr. Mayor, gives a, an overview of what the reserves are there for and how one would use it in a personal circumstances uh, similar to the way the council would use, uh, need to use them. Thank you, uh, Director. Um, can I now call upon Councillor well, Steve? Mr Mayor, I, I did ask if I could just have a quick follow up. Yes, certainly. Thank you. All right. The follow up question would be, um, so would I be correct in uh, saying that in terms of someone's personal funds, if they did nothing about tackling their day to day spending, so the uh, groceries, whatever, uh, in the end, if they used up their savings, they'd have no money left. Is that comparable to a council also? It it could be. Uh, um, if the council uh, had extraordinary expenditure in one year and members will recall that when I put the first budget monitoring uh, report to uh, uh, cabinet back in July of this year, uh, we were indicating that potentially there was going to be a 10 million overspend in the year if the Welsh Government uh, and the UK government weren't able to put more money in to deal with the COVID, uh, increased COVID costs and loss of income that uh, we were expecting uh, in the current year. Well, you've seen the uh, updated budget monitoring report uh, uh, previous uh, to, to this report, and that is showing uh, a projected 1.19 million underspend. So that has changed quite significantly uh, since then. But my concern going into next year is that um, COVID isn't over. Um, we do need to have some monies uh, uh, set aside for emergencies, just like you would in your own personal circumstances. And you'll have to draw on them should that be required. Um, so COVID is one issue that we have to deal with, and there are a number of items of um, that I've identified in the report, which indicates these are the risks that we are managing going forward, including a pay award, um, uh, where a demand, uh, a request has come in from the trade unions for a 10% pay award. 
which if it materialised would have a 14 million pound call on uh, the council's uh, reserves. And so it's important that the council, when one looks at the whole picture uh, and the pressures that potentially could arise, one has to bear that in mind when they make final determinations on how much money can and should be supported from reserves, in particular in any one financial year. So um, uh, th that hopefully gives a, a little bit more clarity on, on the issue of uh, reserves and how you would manage it in your personal life is mm -hmm. you would have to try and cut your cloth to try and live uh, um, uh, evenly uh, over the year, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Jenkins, and also thank you for all the very hard, much hard work that you obviously have put into proposing this budget uh, for us today. Um, Mr Mayor, I've, I've had the answers to my questions. I would just deem your indulgence when it comes to the debate part of this item that I may wish to speak again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Patterson and Director of Finance. Uh, calling upon Councillor Steve Hunt, followed by Councillor Nigel Hunt. Councillor Steve Hunt, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Firstly, Mr Mayor, can I thank our directors, senior officers, leader, deputy leader, cabinet members, and all other members of council, staff, partners like the unions, for recognising the difficulties we go through year on year to balance a budget of millions of pounds, which whilst protecting jobs, sorry, and delivering first class services, not an easy task, I would suggest. This year, however, it is like no other. It will be fair to say one year ago, when setting the budget, the leader spoke about the coronavirus, COVID-19, starting to have an impact across the world, UK, Wales, and more importantly, here in Neatham but Talbot Council. Little do we know the impact would have on all of us, as is shown in one year on, with 124,000 deaths in the UK and 5,000 or more deaths in Wales. Can we offer our sincere condolences to all those who have lost loved ones, family, friends, colleagues, and, and some of those lost living, obviously, in our communities? I'm sure we all here today will have known someone close to us who has been impacted by this terrible virus, Mr Mayor. I am mentioning this today because the physical and mental scars will remain with us for decades to come. And I hope as a local authority, we will continue to support those in our communities long term, as we have already been doing so over the past year in an effective way and our gratitude and thanks go out to everybody associated with Ethan for Talbot Council who have worked so hard in supporting all those affected by this terrible virus. Mr Mayor, today we set the budget once more and the first ever one online, I believe. It's not ideal, of course, especially with varied internet problems, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. We all experience this from time to time, I'm sure. Well, what is necessary is that we get through it uh, during these difficult uh, times. Can I start by saying firstly that as an independent democratic group, we recognise and understand the difficulties and challenges we as a council has, but especially the ruling group of the council year on year when setting a budget that's a legal requirement to be submitted back to Welsh Government for approval. Uh, Welsh Government settlements are not always what we'd like to see, so as to provide the financial support needed to deliver all our services in a way like uh, we would like our services to be supported. Although Neath for Talbot Council still has one of the best settlements year on year across Wales, as uh, the Cabinet member alluded to, this year we are the sixth best settlement in Wales. We also appreciate that the Cabinet Member for Finance Leader, with support from officers, and Howell Jenkins in particular, work extremely hard to try and get the best settlement for Neatham and Talbot Council every year by speaking directly to Welsh Government Cabinet members, working with the unions and other partners to achieve this. Lobbying our MSs, members of the Senate, and other influential partners who make these decisions. 
we all as councillors, I'm sure, try our best to influence and get the best settlement for Neath Portalba councillors so we can support and protect all our services provided across the council. And I would stress we must continue to lobby West Government on behalf of Neath Portalba Council at every opportunity so we can continue to deliver, deliver the best services and most importantly, tackle the very important issue of the council tax level. The budget in front of us today, uh, given the year everyone has had, is a good one. It goes a long way in protecting jobs and sustaining frontline services for all our constituents, which is vitally important going forward. As a county, as county councillors, we all have a duty to listen to our constituents, who it would be fair to say have a varied account of what really matters to them as individuals. However, the consultation process has one major concern that stood out from any other, and that was the council tax increase levels once more. The leader of council, Rob Jones, has consistently said we are a listening council. So given the consultation results on the budget, with reference to the original proposal, council tax rise of 3.75, where the majority of the thousand who took part were objecting to that proposed rise. And just to put it into context, Mr. Mayor, um, I also, as an admin of various social media pages, run my own simple survey on the council tax proposal on its own. And with over 30,000 people viewing the page and a big majority of people commenting on the survey, and surprisingly, nobody supported the original 3.75 rise. In fact, many would like to see a 0% rise being proposed today and supported by all councillors. But we all, as responsible councillors, know this is not achievable and would have a detrimental effect on jobs and frontline services going forward into future years, as explained by Owl Jenkins on a number of occasions. We would like this council, however, to consider and put council tax as a main priority from today and bring down levels of council tax for all our constituents year on year so that we do not remain the third highest council tax in Wales, irrespective of historical reasons. We need as a council to tackle this issue year on year to support all our council tax paying constituents in a way without affecting frontline services and jobs, of course. I believe members and officers here today will be aware that as a group and not a political party, we as individuals of our group can make our own minds and take a decision on how they vote this afternoon. But I believe I am speaking on behalf of the independent democratic group when I say that the council tax element of the budget, as the survey has shown, will remain the single and most important factor to all our constituents for years to come. So we really need to do something about it going forward by starting today. I mentioned at the start of my speech, Mr. Mayor, the impact coronavirus COVID-19 would have. But to now put it into context with the economic situation currently, many businesses will already have shut their doors for good. Others will follow in in due course, I'm sure. Thousands of employees have been furloughed. Businesses before the pandemic had struggled. But now whether you're self-employed, working uh, for a company part-time, their future is unpredictable. We also mentioned the mental and physical scars that this virus has caused. So now was not the time to give our communities the added pressure of a council tax rise originally proposed by the Labour Control Council of 3.75. We as an independent group would have liked to have proposed what our communities asked for today, and that is a 0% rise, of which Plaid Cymru Group are suggesting. However, we understand that's not realistic without damaging frontline service and, and jobs, not today, possibly, but in the future. So we would have been putting forward our own amendment to the budget proposals of 2.75 today. I would, I would have at this stage, Mr. Mayor, in my original address to council, explained where we would have proposed the 1% reduction for the council tax would have come from. An amendment sheet would have been circulated by Mr. Craig Griffiths, 
but given that the administration has listened to us on our communities by proposing themselves a 2.75 increase, uh, then that will not be necessary. We as independent councillors will be supporting the budget outlined in the report in front of us today for the reasons set out in the said report. Finally, Mr Mayor, can I ask the, the administration, administration to seriously take on board what we have said about the crippling effect that council tax has on all our communities and constituents living in them and continue to lobby Welsh Government for con continue better settlements for Neath and Talbot and also continue to look at ways without affecting jobs and services to keep reducing any proposals council tax rises may have in the future. Um, Neath but Talbot cannot allow historical reasons for why we are the third highest council tax in Wales to be used as not to do anything in delivering lowest council taxes possible uh, going forward into future years. We cannot blame the 25 year old problem for not tackling the council tax situation. We really need to address the situation, Mr Mayor, starting now for future budget years. Thank you very much for your time and patience for me to be allowed to say what I needed to say. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Um, members, I wanted to point out the fact that, that I've given allowances today because of the uh, important uh, topic subjects uh, before us, that members are allowed to, to, to speak longer uh, more than the normal standing orders. Um, I've had an indication from the Cabinet Member, Councillor Carol Clement-Williams. Uh, Councillor Cabinet Member, would you like to come in at this point or would you like to come in at the end? Uh, no, thank you, Mr Mayor. Now that I've heard what the opposition members have proposed or, or, or announced today, um, I would like to say I will then, uh, if there's a, as there is a, another um, or proposed amendment uh, that I will be recording, I will be calling, <laughs> excuse me, for a recorded vote on um, this item. And I would also like to ask um, councillor or, or the Plaid Cymru Group or Councillor Llewellyn as the leader. Um, many, many times we've been asked um, to not put council tax up as much as we are. Um, whatever we propose, uh, they always come back with something lower. Um, we are tackling uh, and trying to reduce the gap and we are succeeding in reducing the gap year on year. But what I would say to you is if you want to Put set council tax this year at zero percent. What alternative proposals do you have? You can't just sit on the fence. You can't just say this is what we want. A kid will walk into a street shop and tell you he'd want something out of every jar, but you can only have what you have. So please come forward with your proposals as to how next year you will pull this back. Because Audit Wales will be saying you've spent 25% of your reserves in one year. This is not sustainable and you will have to pull some of that back next year. So please come forward with your proposals. It's a bit late. It's, it's the budget setting meeting, but I'd like to know what they are. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Cabinet Member. I'm going to call upon Councillor Nigel Hunt, followed by Councillor Mason, followed by Councillor Purcell. <laughs> then Councillor Freegard, then Councillor Bamsey, then Councillor Woolcock, and then Councillor Percy. So, Councillor Nigel Hunt, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mr Mayor, I also put my hand up because I would like to come back and, and answer the point raised with the Cabinet Bender. No problem. The, thank you. Other, uh, thank you, Councillor Llewellyn. Councillor Hunt, please. Councillor Nigel Hunt. <laughs> um, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I feel quite privileged today to speak on such an important meeting. Um, the rainy day, the budget's always a big, big meeting for the council and uh, the rainy day that I've heard talked about by cabinet members has finally arrived. In fact, it's been torrential rain the last year uh, across the county, across the UK and the world. Um, so what what struck me about the council tax is, is that we in Neath Patalba, the Neath Patalba council taxpayers pay the third highest council tax in Wales. They're just 4% behind less than Blaine Gwent. 
um, that is the highest council tax in Wales. And we are 25%, we pay 25% more in council tax than our city deal partners in Pembrokeshire. Now that to me is unacceptable. I get uh, approached this with my residents who were, who were suffering at this time. And uh, so I, you know, we looked into it and Carol has said, how can we, uh, how, how can we justify it? Well, when you look at our general reserves in East Talbot, when I looked at that, at that table, I was astounded really that we had the highest general reserves in Wales. We had £21 million in, 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 the, in the table. Uh, we had more than, of all these counties that pay less in council tax than us, you could, you could combine any two counties, whether it be Swansea, Carmarthen, Pembrokeshire, uh, Pembrokeshire, actually, even though it's not bordering us, uh, Powys, Ronda Can and Taff, Aubergend, combine their general reserves, and it still wasn't as much as Neath but Talbots. So we've been stashing a lot in general reserves. So um, and that got me that got me really looking at this, so I thought I'd better drill down. So I started looking at the Welsh Government's guidance for local elected members. I'm sure a lot of you have been reading this because it's scrutiny of local holding and utilising of reserves. So I looked at that and of course the advice in there is really and uh, how well has confirmed this with us and given us some great data on it and it's including the 0% freeze and the 2.75% the rise that you, that you were proposing. Um, and the general rule is that the general reserves should be between 3 and 5% of your net revenue expenditure, your NRE. So ours at the moment is over 5%. Some of the other counties are operating out of 2%. So, I mean, I don't know what risks, and I'd like to ask Carol, uh, uh, Carol this. What, uh, what risks do we have in East Talbot that is different to those in Swansea or in the Rhondda or in Bridgend? Or in Command and Chair, or in Powys, because they are operating out of their, 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 their proportion, their percentage is much closer to 3% than it is to 5 Now, with the proposal that we do to freeze our council tax, um, if you forgive me, I'll just get the I'll get the data that Howell sent us. To freeze the council tax, this is very sustainable, by the way. Um, we would take it down. The gross, the general reserve percentage of the net budget would be 4.69%. Okay. Bear in mind now, the, the the what the Welsh Audit Office recommend is between three and five percent. We would be at 4.69. Swansea is probably operating up to two percent because they are, they, they, their reserves are less than 10 million, and their net that their NRE is 450 million. One and a half times the amount of us of ours. So do the maths. They are operating at the two percent. So how can they do it there, and we we can't do four point six nine year? What you are proposing today is a um, three. You are proposing a three point what, a two point seven five percent rise, right? The percentage of your general reserve over net budget would be five point three three. Our freeze. Our, 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 our general reserves are cool enough to sustain a freeze. We are closer to 5%, which is the top end of what the Welsh Audit Office or what um, the, 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 uh, the Audit Commission in striking a balance, which is the UK equivalent. They're at 5%. So um, we are closer with the freeze to that, to that mark, the highest mark, than you are with your rise. Now, I don't think it's very ethical that in a year when we've suffered so much that we should be asking the council taxpayers of Neath but Talbot were already paying the third highest in Wales to increase the payments when we are squirrelling away millions of pounds that we're not spending in our general reserve. Now, I, I will ask Carol this now, what risks do we face in Neath but Talbot that those in Carmarthenshire, that the council in Swansea, the council in Bridgend, or any council, what risks do we face that they don't? And how can they do it? How can they have a general reserve of nine, 10 million, and we can't take our general reserve down to 14.72? 14.72 million, it will still be 50% more than Swansea. So. 
we can afford this and it is sustainable. And next year's budget is next year's budget. We don't know what's going to go on in the next year. We could have a great recovery. But I think that the taxpayer, the council taxpayer in Neath but Talbot deserves better value for money. And we should give them a break and, and, and freeze, freeze the council tax like we've freezed the, the public sector workers' pay rise in line with that. And I think we should have more empathy with the council taxpayers throughout Neath but Talbot. And again, I'd like to be I'd like to be told what risks we are facing here in Neath but Talbot that those in Swansea are not facing. I understand the question, Mr. Mayor. If you, if you would like me to respond, I will be more than happy. C certainly. Um, can I firstly just point out, though, can I remind members and ask members that uh, the chat function isn't for general comments. It should only be used to indicate that you wish to speak. So um, uh, just to remind members uh, uh, what that function purpose is for. So yeah, I'd like to call upon the cabinet member for finance and the director of finance if there's a need then also as well. So yes, please. Well, um, Howell has the far superior knowledge than me uh, as he is a qualified for accountant. However, I'll give it my, my best shot. Um, just taking general reserves and that only it doesn't give the whole picture. Howell has also circulated today our position in reserves to all the other surrounding councils that were mentioned yesterday during the meeting. We have the second lowest overall reserves. So it's the way we've chosen to distribute the reserves. Well, I would also I let me finish, please, Councillor Han. What I would also say would be that if you look at Swansea, they are raising their council tax by 3.9%. And Bridgender also raised Still lower than I was. Mr. Mayor, um, could I finish speaking without interruption, please? Mayor? Yeah, can I have some order here, please, to ensure that when members are speaking, everybody else's microphones are on mute. Uh, cabinet member, if you can continue, thank you. Thank you, I respect that. I'm happy if you, if you, uh, you, know, you want to uh, um, accept uh, a response back. But if you'd let me finish, please, um, I would really appreciate that very, very much. What I would also say is, um, I've lost my thread now, Swansea is going up by 3.9%. Bridgend is going up far more than we are, three points, I think that's around the same, yeah. four. Um, and what I would say is that the residents in Bridgend are up in arms because we are coming in so low. What I would also say is we have made a conscious effort over the last five years. Well, actually, a, a lot longer than that, but I, I'll cover all of it off um, in my right to reply at the end. We have consistently been the second lowest council tax rise in Wales, had the second lowest council tax rise in Wales um, over the last five years, a whole 6% lower than the average across Wales. So please, please, let me um, assure you that bringing council tax down to a level that is sustainable for our people is our main goal. I meet with ministers regularly and we are already, they have commissioned a report to discuss fairer funding across Wales. I have been involved in these discussions. I fight our corner every time and I promise you that I will continue to keep fighting for fairer funding across Wales. And again, I will remind you, 80% of our residents don't pay the band D. They pay bands A to C, which is far less than band D. Now, other councils will have possibly 80% of people band D and higher, which means that their council tax base is higher than ours. So taking reserves on their own is not comparable. You have to take into account the reserves as a whole, the, the general and the specific reserves, you have to take into account the demand the council has. We have uh, uh, areas of the lowest deprivation in Wales. 
which means there's a higher call on our support services. The, the um, ratio of uh, lower earners in East Portalbert means that where a council has a higher percentage of people earning more money and therefore are able to pay more council tax, they are less likely to need the support of the council. And I would just uh, like to ask Howell if there's anything he wants to add. I, I've, I, could, I could go on and on. I have more, but uh, please be assured I will cover it off at the end. But I uh, thank you for your question. And I completely agree. We do want to bring it down, but we also have to be sensible. If you don't mind, Mr. Mayor, um, would I would you like to ask Howell if there's anything he would like to add to that response, please? Uh, certainly, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, as members are aware, um, I was asked in cabinet uh, scrutiny yesterday about the impact of uh, 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 general reserves uh, as a proportion of the um, uh, net budget and that was uh, highlighted uh, by councillor uh, Nigel Hunt in his presentation earlier. Um, whilst this information isn't readily available, we have made some uh, checks on uh, various uh, information from other councils overnight and I shared that uh, uh, about an hour before this meeting uh, started. Um, as the cabinet member just mentioned, um, the uh, <coughs> amount of uh, amount of general reserves that Neath Talbot has got uh, is 19.9 million pounds. Uh, our um, uh, specific reserves total just short of 38 million pounds uh, and is in total 19% of our um, uh, budget is uh, identified in reserves. And these are not all reserves that we control. They are reserves uh, in part that the schools manage and the governing bodies manage. Uh, uh, other elements are to do with building up sufficient funds to actually manage the projects in the city deal, which is supposed to be bringing in £1.2 billion pounds worth of investment uh, uh, through the council and managing lots of different activities. But if I compare that with some of the other councils in total, um, uh, the reference was made to Swansea Council. They've got about 20% of the uh, um, um, budgets uh, in uh, total reserves. Uh, Pembrokeshire 19.24, Bridgend 22.53, Carmarthenshire 27.16%. Uh, uh, and they that. have and they have decided, uh, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, to actually put more money into specific reserves rather than into general reserves, um, which uh, this council has done uh, over the past few years. Um, that's not to say that they don't need to manage all of their activity. If they had uh, a scenario where they needed to deal with uh, specific uh, uh, challenges in year, they would then probably have to dip into some of their specific reserves to actually manage their financial affairs in those particular years, in addition to uh, uh, considering the impact on general reserves. So th that's the um, uh, position in terms of the overall reserves. And in terms of risks that we are managing, um, all councils manage a significant amount of risks, but members will see that in section 15 of uh, the report that's in front of uh, council today, on page 90, 91, uh, moving on to 92, there are a list of issues and risks that Neath Talbot and I would suggest many other councils uh, have to manage in terms of uh, 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 when they set their budgets and what are the outstanding issues that have to be managed in year. In year. And that is the list that is reflected there. So there is a, a significant amount of risk that could uh, have a result on either general or specific reserves that have to be uh, dealt with um, uh, during not just 21-22 financial year, but into future financial years. And it'll be for uh, uh, the advice um, uh, that Council receives around the whole picture of general reserves, service levels, um, the pull from individual reserves in any one particular year, all of that has to be taken into account when you finalise uh, the budget uh, for the coming financial year. 
Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Jenkins. Uh, I'm now going to call upon Councillor Meisen, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, yeah, I'd like to ask Mr Jenkins, please, I apologise like Suzanne did earlier. I did ask a question yesterday in the Cabinet scrutiny, but the majority of our course councillors weren't there. Um, how does Neath Patalba's council tax increase compare to other councils' increases in the council tax? And after that, could 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 Councillor Llewellyn please confirm what services he would cut or what staff would be cut in order to close the gap next year? Thank you, Councillor Meisen. I, I know Councillor Llewellyn have indicated to come in in due course. I'm sure he'll pick up on that uh, point in a bit. Uh, calling upon Councillor Purcell, please. Thank you very much. Um, I also have great respect for Howell. Um, he's been a good friend to me in the years that I was the leader of the opposition and had to um, bring up amendments and things like that. As I say, I have the greatest respect for him and I stress I am by no stretch of the imagination an economist. And in normal times, I would be sitting here being quite relieved to see the reduction from the original 3.75 to 2.75. But these times are not normal, exceptionally not normal. In fact, we could almost use the word unprecedented. We might have heard that before. What we need to do is to have the courage to dare to be different. If we have the courage to support the call for a freeze, young couples with mortgages, young families who've suddenly found their income devastated, will have one less thing to worry about. And as I said before, I'm not an economist, but even I understand about investing in local businesses. And I'm very privileged to represent Pontida, which has a lively, did have, hopefully will have again, a lively, thriving town centre full of independent businesses. I know they are desperate to reopen. If we have the courage to support the call for a freeze, this will give each individual family just that little bit more money to spend in our local economy. Nobody's stressed this so far. We're just talking about the council's finances. But the council's finances are only part of the picture. It's the finances being experienced by every family, by every business. And calling for this freeze and supporting this freeze will, I think, have a dramatic impact on these individual businesses. Also, by having the courage to support the call for a freeze, we would be showing that we are indeed a listening council. If over a thousand people have responded to the consultation, this is the thing that's causing people the most concern. I'm not going to begin to start bandying figures backwards and forwards. The mind boggles, but I'm very grateful to those people who've done the research and found these statistics. And I'm particularly grateful to Councillor Nigel Hunt for all the research that he has done in getting to the bottom of all this. But basically, mine is a plea for us to dare, as I said before, to think differently. We have it within our power to make a one-off extraordinary gesture of support to our beleaguered communities during these extraordinary times. And I'd urge you to have the courage and the confidence to invest in our communities by supporting Clyde Cymru's amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Purcell. Councillor Sharon Freegard, please. Mr Mayor. Oh, thank you. Could I, uh, I beg your indulgence, Mr Mayor? Um, Councillor Meisen uh, asked a question uh, which we haven't had, uh, you haven't asked Mr Jenkins. Um, uh, Councillor Latham, my question does cover Councillor Meisen's uh, question as well, if I may. Oh. That's great. Thank you. Councillor Sharon Freegard. OK, th thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, as I said, you know, um, my, my questions do touch on previous questions as well. But if we could have the detail, I would be grateful. Um, in comparing the, um, this report, Mr Jenkins, to the draft proposals, how has it been possible to reduce the proposed council tax from 3.75 to 2.75? That's my the first part of my question. Uh, the second part is also, given the amendment made by Councillor Llewellyn, 
again, it does touch on the others. What proposals has actually been brought to the table, brought forward to say how he would close the gap and how and what uh, public services would he be kept in and in which wards uh, they would be kept? Because obviously he would need to achieve this this amendment and this proposal. So what proposals are being done to do that? Because clearly these would affect public services. And as we've been talking about uh, COVID, we do know, we do know for a fact that it's going to be next year, the true financial impact from COVID is going to be seen. Now, yes, it would be really good to dare to think differently. But we are thinking creatively and um, we have an obligation to our residents to safeguard the finances for all residents of Port Talbot for public services. So we cannot think well, what's going to happen to next year's budget, you know, so what next year's budget, we have to think strategically, we have to plan to ensure that everything is financially sound and robust as best we can to maximize the the, the least that we can pay for tax uh, increase this year based on assurances that we can afford to do these things for next year so we we, we can't just think about today we have to think about tomorrow. We have to think about this year and we have to think about next year. It would be lovely not to, but unfortunately, we are obligated to the residents of our wards. So we do need to know, um, has there been proposals? Because I can see that, you know, Councillor Loch Llewellyn has thought about the proposals for this year, but what are the proposals for next year? How do we close the gap? what public services and in which wards would be affected um, this year if we were to take that, that extra money out of reserves, which would seem, doesn't seem sound and robust financial practice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Freegard. Um, Mr Jenkins, please. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for that question. Uh, those questions. There were there were a number of ones uh, there. Um, in terms of um, uh, the draft budget that went out to consultation, as members are aware, that included uh, the uh, draft increase of a 3.75% uh, uh, um, uh, council tax, um, the 3.1 million in terms of use of reserves. And, and the question was, what has changed to allow us to reduce the council tax by the 1% to 2.75? Well, the answer to that is, is that um, when we uh, uh, came to Cabinet on the 13th of January, um, we were indicating that the uh, current year's uh, budget monitoring position was showing an overspend of about two and a half uh, million pounds. And then uh, that uh, report had been uh, prepared just uh, uh, before Christmas. And as members are aware, the actual uh, provisional settlement that the Welsh Government gave us was on the 21st of December, just as we were leading into the uh, Christmas period. So, um, and as part of their uh, Welsh Government announcements uh, post Christmas, they have uh, made a significant amount of additional monies available to um, give us more certainty about what the underspend uh, is going to be this year and the funding levels for this year. So they have confirmed that they are helping uh, councils with regards to council tax support. They have given this authority £603,000. Um, they have uh, said that they will support uh, the uh, challenges around council tax collection in the current year um, and all the budget issues there, £727,000. And uh, they have confirmed that they are uh, refunding us for the loss of income for the period uh, from uh, September to December. And all of that was shown in uh, the earlier budget report, uh, budget monitoring report. All of that information has come to hand since Christmas and since the beginning of this financial year. And that is what I was able to report to members 
in the budget monitoring report uh, under a previous item uh, on today's papers, showing that we are now underspending by 1.19 million. That extra uh, uh, 3 million and a half million turnaround has given me more ability to actually say, yes, the council tax uh, can reduce and we can reduce the amount in the contingency budget to manage our affairs next year. Because there's no certainty going into next year about uh, how much monies we will be able to receive from the Welsh Government to manage COVID, to manage the consequences of Brexit, to manage the impacts of a, a, a pay award that is greater than 1%, to manage the challenges of continuing to provide free school meals to, to children uh, during the period. So all of these are elements that one has to uh, um, deal with in terms of in-year consequences if the Welsh Government and the UK Government aren't able to continue with the significant support that they have over the past uh, 12 months into uh, the next financial year. So hopefully that explains the, the, the change in the th why we've been able to propose a reduction to the 2.75. The uh, Councillor Meisen uh, did ask the question as well then, what, what was the increase uh, um, for next year compared to other local authorities? Well, um, so, some of that has uh, been answered by the uh, Cabinet member, but my understanding is that the lowest increase uh, um, that I've seen for next year is a 2.65% increase in the Ronald Cunn and Taff. We are the second at 2.75, and one of the highest being uh, set is a 6.95% uh, increase, but most of them are between 3 and 4%. Um, in terms of uh, proposals uh, from anybody in, uh, to close the gap, um, I haven't had any proposals to close uh, a, a budget gap for next year or uh, definitely not for future years. And members uh, will have uh, uh, noted that in the budget report, we are saying that at the moment, if there is no funding increase via the Welsh Government settlement for 22-23 and for the following three years, then there is a £49 million gap that we will need to manage and uh, uh, to uh, find alternative uh, uh, reductions, income generation to balance those budgets. I am hoping that both the UK Government and Welsh Government will provide some additional support in those years but it's not going to be the £49 million. And that is increased uh, if the uh, uh, proposal is to actually increase uh, the pull from the reserve by the £2.2 million next year. Um, that increases that funding gap to f at least £51 million um, over that period. So it increases the amount of savings, income generation, that the council will be required to deliver from April 22 onwards. So hopefully that gives a, an overview of the, of the different elements uh, of the questions posed by Councillor Freegard and Councillor Meisen. Thank you, Mr Jenkins. Calling upon Councillor Scott Bamsey, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, as has been mentioned already this afternoon, we in Heath Talbot pay one of the highest council tax levels in Wales, currently sitting at the third highest. Yet we hold the highest levels of reserves, as been mentioned. This has been a very difficult year for us all, and this is also a unique budget and a unique position to finally close the gap of council tax that our residents have unfairly been paying year on year. How well um, you compare the council reserves um, to people's personal savings? I mentioned things like cars and holidays. It's a harsh reality that a large percentage of our council tax paying pop population scrape to get by month by month and aren't in a position to save money. And these are hard working families I'm talking about here. Cars and fancy holidays are something they can only dream of. Yet we're asking these same people yet again to pay even more council tax. Our council tax ex extremely healthy general reserves will be of little consolation to these people, I'm sure. It is now time for the self-proclaimed listening council to finally start listening to our residents 
give something back and freeze council tax in this time of need. It's time we make an effort to bring our council tax fairly in line with the rest of Wales. Now on the question of other council tax uh, going up, let's not forget they're starting at a far lower position than us. They're already paying a lot less and with these increases they'll still be paying less than us. And as for the question of uh, what are we going to cut, I think Nigel and, and the rest of my play colleagues have answered that. This is costed, it'll come out of the general reserves and we will not need to cut anything. So let's show some compassion, listen to our community and do the right thing and support our proposal of a tax freeze. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bamsey. Now calling upon Councillor Arwen Wilcock, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah. Um, in, in response, really, to uh, the opening remarks by uh, uh, Councillor Llewellyn, uh, uh, just like Councillor Llewellyn, I'm one of the uh, original intake of councillors uh, going back to 1995 on this council. In fact, one of only five that remain from that uh, original uh, intake. And Mr Mayor, yes, it is a quarter of a century since the council became the victim of a disproportionate share of funding at local government organisation in 1996. That saw us come out on the worst end of a 60-40% split in the way that funding was distributed. Despite this authority having some of the most expensive, expensive services to run. However, for the first three years of that quarter century, the Welsh Government was not in being. The last 10 years has seen the slash and burn austerity policies of Tory governments that have, re that have wreaked havoc on public services. In between, from 2007 to 2011, there was a labour plied coalition in Cardiff. Well, Mr Mayor, forgive me if I missed it, but I don't recall Plaid that Plaid did anything to address the funding issue during those four years either. Mr Mayor, this is not the time to take risks. Challenges post-Covid are unknown to us and the costs uh, that have been incurred will have to be repaid. We cannot therefore be profligate now by diminishing our reserves when we face such an uncertain future. Let's look at some of the uh, English local authorities, Northamptonshire, for example, who diminished their reserves and almost went bankrupt. Mr Mayor, I believe that the Cabinet and officers have carried out an exceptional uh, uh, piece of work in setting the budget in front of us this afternoon. Being able to reduce the proposed increase in council tax of 3.75% by a full one percentage point is absolutely worthy of praise and I will be supporting the budget in its entirety today as per the original recommendation. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Wilcock. Uh, now calling upon Councillor Percy, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor, and please bear with me, members. My uh, connection's a little bit uh, iffy at the net. Um, I had a few things I was going to say, um, but I've got a couple of extra things now um, just to pick up on some points made by some other members. Um, and in particular, some of the, the points made by uh, Councillor Hunt in terms of um, neighbouring authorities and levels of reserves there. Um, I think <laughs> I, I wouldn't say Swansea is a great example in terms of uh, looking at their reserves and saying that, that is, uh, that's appropriate. And I, I, any analysis of their own um their their own reports on their budget actually reveals that they're, they're very concerned about the level of general reserves they're holding um and as uh, howell has said they're actually holding quite a lot more um specific reserves than we are um and planning to use those um uh, this year to help um meet their covid uh, pressures so i think you know the full picture uh, needs to be given when we're talking about reserves here and we don't have the highest level of reserves uh, of neighbouring councils um, we do if you look at general reserves only but if you look at the reserve balance as a whole for those councils we do not hold the highest amount of reserves 
um, we're, we're actually um, lower than uh, Swansea, Carmarthenshire, uh, Pembrokeshire, Bridgend, Rhondda, for example. So I just wanted to get that, that out of the way uh, to start with. Um, but what, one of the points I wanted to raise um, is, you know, if, if we look at the report that's in front of us today, you know, page 71, um, we've got some commentary saying that, you know, our um, ongoing use of general reserves cannot continue at this level um, and will be further considered from spring 2021 in the medium, firm, uh, medium term financial plan. Um, you know, it's worth bearing in mind that these comments are in reference to the planned spending we got of uh, 3.1 million, but it actually goes on to say, uh, and as Howell has already mentioned, you know, the council may have to dip into reserves further um, in the next uh, financial year. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in this budget. Um, you know, there's a chance, um, for example, on the, the staff pay claim, which could be significant, which Howell has already covered. And that's before we look at direct costs to the council from COVID next year. Now, the point I want to make about the rainy day that people keep talking about, the rainy day happened last year. And when, when that rain came crashing down last year, we had to be prepared to deliver services and meet those costs as a council before any support came forward from Welsh Government. And the fact that we had those reserves allowed us to do that without hesitation, react to the emergency and provide the services to the public. That was the rainy day that we dealt with last year. And I think what we need to be very careful of is if we're going to if we're going to say that we're going to spend more and more of our reserves, the Plaid Cymru proposal is 25% this year, without any consideration of the uncertainty ahead. You know, we owe it to the public to be upfront about the situation we're in and not say that's without consequence. Um, you know, if we have to react uh, to an emergency situation in future, I would like to say that we could do that confidently and swiftly with, with the knowledge we've got adequate reserves. Um, and not go chasing, uh, you know, a, a unrealistically low balance in reserves just um, to make a political point. I think, you know, on balance, we need to weigh up all these considerations. Um, I, none of us want to raise council tax at a difficult time, but we're not in control of the financial constraints in which we're working. Um, and I think the, the relatively modest impact to residents gives the council the confidence to be able to react in an uncertain year ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Percy. Councillor Sonia Reynolds, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I was wanting to be, I don't want to repeat my, my colleagues' comments, so I'll try and stay clear. But I, as are they, am more than aware that this is an unprecedented year and therefore has had a huge impact on our residents. We have more res residents requiring to claim universal credit than in recent years. We do our residents a disservice, however, if we can't provide the services that they need meeting the increasing demand on care services that we believe this year is going to go up and up as we as we come out of the covid crisis and families can't cope with the changes that have happened we also know there's going to be a demand for mental he mental health support in our schools as well as the general population we need to meet the concerns of our young people and our youth uh, and we are seeking to do that with this budget and we don't know what may hit us in the following year. For that reason, I will be supporting the budget as it stands with the unprecedented drop in tax rise following the consultation. We will, however, provide support for those residents who have difficulty paying their council tax. And I would like to ask if this year again we will be continuing with that support at the same sort of level and that we will be as we have been in the past promoting that support as widely and as regularly as possible thank you thank you councillor councillor reynolds uh, mr jenkins would you, would you like to respond on that Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as members know, there's uh, 64,000 uh, uh, households within the uh, county borough, 
and the um, budget for council tax uh, support has uh, increased uh, in real terms by uh, 500,000 pounds to um, um, to provide for the increased number of about 500 residents uh, uh, householders in uh, the Neath Talbot area who have um, uh, applied for additional council tax support during this year and hence the budget has been increased to 19.8 million pounds for next year and yes we will uh, continue to uh, publicize the um, uh, availability of the council tax support those people who apply for universal uh, credit automatically get referred to uh, the uh, council for consideration for uh, a council tax uh, support and we contact them to ensure that we have uh, got the uh, appropriate information to give them the particular benefit um, and as I said there's 17 and a half thousand uh, um, households who benefit from that at the moment and as promised to cabinet scrutiny yesterday we will be uh, uh, sharing the uh, uh, <clears throat> the links to the council's website and promoting it on social media, uh, not just uh, as the bud uh, budget is set now and the council tax bills are issued for next year, but also during the coming financial year, there will be regular uh, uh, messages going out to help people. So yes, there's a substantial amount of uh, uh, support being provided by the council uh, this year and will continue into next year. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, members, can I remind many of you again that the chat function isn't being used in accordance with the guidance uh, that I set out at the start of the meeting? And uh, it's really unfortunate that I got to remind members that this chat function really to indicate that you wish to speak, not to have general conversation back and forth. So if I can remind members for the second time on that, please. Um, I'm now going to call upon uh, Councillor Alan Llewellyn, please. Right, uh, my own, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, th th thank you very much, um, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm just <laughs> continuing dropping point stone as they come in from 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 everybody uh, during the uh, discussion. I was asked to reply um, by the cabinet member, Councillor Karen, uh, Carol Cummins Williams, uh, and I've asked, I've been asked to reply by various councillors since then during the course of the of the discussion. Now. Um, I'm quite concerned by the question raised originally by the cabinet member because I think the figures are quite clear. Um, our amendment would mean no increase in council tax um, and about £15 million pounds in reserves, which is 4.69%, near a 5% of the revenue budget, which is a, at the high end of all good practice coming from you know various um audit uh, audit bodies um and it's significantly higher than 11.5 percent 11.5 million uh, reserves that we were working on in january now a lot of the information has been given in debate by councillor Nigel hunt so i won't repeat that but i'll make the point that Howell's email to us a bit earlier today showing comparative general reserve figures uh, shows that within Meath Talbot currently, uh, today, um, we have almost £20 million in general reserves, compared with in the region of £9 million in Bridge End and Swansea, £11 million in, in Commander, etc. Et now, I accept the point that the specific reserves or departmental reserves are, are, are different in, in, in the different authorities. But our amendment refers specifically to the general reserves. Now, if there was a problem about the way that we are accounting for general reserves compared with specific reserves, you should have been told that. You know, we are addressing the general reserves. That is what is in the amendment. Now, and our general reserves will be higher after the Plank of Amendment than they were in the consultation draft that went out uh, for the for the um, consideration of the people of 
neath Portal Boat. Um, now, Hudian asked what services will be cut or jobs lost by the applied proposal. The answer is none. If we just asked how many Neath Portalbo taxpayers, council taxpayers, will be helped by the Pie Company proposal, the answer is all of them. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Llewellyn. Calling upon Councillor Suzanne Patterson, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, We've heard quite a lot and wide ranging debate here today, but I take it, I can't get my head around why you can take one line out of a budget. I haven't gone through the budget to count how many lines there are on there and just start comparing. It's not, it's a very simplistic viewpoint, in my opinion. You have to also look at what that council's services are like what their numbers are looked after children are like, how many uh, direct payments they have, everything in the budget has to be taken into account. You cannot just take one line out of the budget and make comparisons. That doesn't work as far as I'm concerned. And I, as I say, I'm not an economist, but you, you need to do far more than that. Um, we've heard metaphorically speaking that it's raining cats and dogs. Well, let's hope we don't have a hurricane next year. You know, we are not sure about what happens and even Plaid have said today they're not sure either. They're just hoping it'll be better. What we're doing in this budget is our level best to make sure we are ready for what comes when you don't know what is coming. Let's hope that we don't have any more events like we've just recently had in Skewing, where the call authority are not playing their part and it's left down to the council to sort of immediately react to anything that happens. That's the sort of prudency that this budget will give us going forward. And I understand that there's a lot of hurt out there. Don't get me wrong. In the past, I have been one of those people who have looked at my monthly budget and thought, wow, what's going to happen here? But when times are bad for our citizens, it is incumbent upon our council to make sure we are ready for whatever happens because they cannot do it on their own. It takes the combined power and money of the council to attack some of these things that, that come up like skewing and landslides and uh, floods in Aberdeleis and all over the county borough we've had you know serious weather events which eventually cost the, the council money and we as I said before, we must be ready to deal with it straight away, um, even at some later stage Welsh Government do help out. We can't say to our residents, well, we can't come today because we're going to wait on Welsh Government to give us the money. So um, I think this is a prudent budget. It's, it's looking after council taxpayers' money and I will be voting for the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Uh, members, I've got an indication from another set of members to speak. So at that point, then we're going to be uh, focusing more on the recommendation. I think we've given it a good, uh, a good air in this afternoon on this particular agenda, and we've got quite a bit more uh, in front of us in terms of business this afternoon. Um, so can I call upon the cabinet member for finance, please? Uh, just very briefly, Chair, to in, in answer to uh, Councillor Thwellen's, um response, I think he's misunderstood my question. My question was, we will have to claw the money that we don't get out of the council tax rise this year, next year and over the next five years, which would be £10 million. Pound. I'm asking what he would cut. Um, uh, um, sorry. I'm asking what he would cut to close that gap. It, it leaves a real hole. And if he's not sure about what I'm saying, please ask how well and you can explain to him. Yeah, Mr Mayor, sorry, I've got to come back on this point. I've just said there will be nothing cut. There the, will. Nothing. You're on mute, Mr. Mayor. Mute, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next call in upon Councillor Anthony Richards, please. 
Great, Diolch and Fawr, uh, Mr. Meyer, and um, thank you uh, to everybody for their contributions. Um, residents in Neath Portalbert, in the ward that I represent, along with my colleague, Councillor Purcell, in Pontadawa, and Welsh families in general. Um, and I mentioned that point about Welsh families in general because we're mentioning about a rainy day, and I don't quite, I'd like an answer really on. When we're talking about Neath Talbot Council and we're talking about the reserves, etc., within Neath Talbot Council, those rainy days happen in other local authorities as well. So they have the same issues with the coronavirus with regards to flooding, with regards to other issues. So I'd like you know that to be taken into consideration. But what what my point is is that Welsh families in general have been hit hard and are in arrears due to struggling with rent, energy bills. And one of the biggest bills is people's council tax. Now, Councillor Carol, uh, Carol uh, Clement Williams is constantly praising the Welsh Government for the funded provided uh, to this authority. And in part, I 100% I agree with her. Um, does she agree, though, with Councillor Alan Llewellyn uh, and what he said at the beginning regarding that the Welsh Labour government could have used 100 million of its unspent 800 million to freeze council tax right away and offset last year's 4.8% average rise? Neath Talbot Council may have the lowest increase, yet we are still one of the highest council tax in Wales. So we may have the lowest increase, but we're still one of the highest council tax in Wales. Carmarthenshire is below the Welsh average. And um, when we think, and let's put that into some local context, Carmarthenshire, and I will say it's Plaid led are below Labour controlled councils like Neath Talbot and um, like Neath Talbot. So if you lived in Garnet, which is on the border to Neath Port Albert, Garnet in Carmarthenshire, they would pay significantly less council tax than residents of Gwanka Girwen, of Bryn Amman, of Pontadawa, and the rest of, um, of Neath Port Albert. Significantly less. The same will happen with people on the, uh, on the bordering county uh, with, with regards to Clydach. Um, what I will say is, you know, residents are deciding to live in those neighbouring counties as a result of Neath Talbot. You know, it's something like nearly £300 less if you live in Ghana to how it would be living in Gwanka Girwen. And that is not fair on those residents living, uh, living there on that border. Also, what I would like to say now, as many people uh, from the uh, Labour Party uh, on this council have said, if the Labour administration on this council does not agree with Plaid Cymru on this, then will you commit today that the Labour leader in Carmarthenshire, the former member of this council, is wholly inappropriate in his decision to call for a freeze when Carmarthenshire are significantly less than Neath Port Talbot Council? Point of order, Mr Mayor, we're talking about Neath Port Talbot. Councillor Richards. What I'm saying is, is you're talking about it being a rainy day, and it is a rainy day day in other counties. And it is important to point out that how why should it be that residents who are living in, delivering uh, living sorry in the neighbouring authorities are paying significantly less than what people in Neath Port Talbot. And I appreciate why. Uh, the cabinet member is given a point of order because she does not want this to go out to the public that people are paying nearly 300 pounds less in the in uh, Carmarthenshire to what they're paying in uh, in Neath Port Talbot in the, on the on the borders uh, so I do think it is important to raise that point thank you uh, councillor Richards I'm sure the I'm sure the cabinet member for finance will uh, address some of the points that are being raised uh, across parties by members at the end when she gets an opportunity to to sum up. Uh, Councillor Rebecca Phillips, please. Diolch Maer. As we are aware, last month the leader of Plaid Cymru, Adam Price, called on the Labour Welsh Government to use unspent funding 
to allow councils across Wales to freeze council tax. The Labour Welsh Government refused to do so. Therefore, unfortunately, here we are today debating this important issue. It has been a tough 12 months for everybody, a year like no other. Council tax is a huge issue for our residents, and we see this by the responses to the consultation. Comments including, Council tax in MPT is already too high, amongst the highest in Wales. Services had been reduced or stopped in 2020, so why should we pay more for them? On this note, I recall receiving an email from our then Chief Executive stating staff were being redeployed and we as councillors should communicate to our constituents that routine work would take far longer to complete. Whilst this is of course understandable in unprecedented circumstances, increasing council tax for our residents this year is not. My colleague Anthony Richard has mentioned that the council tax in MPT is significantly higher than our neighbouring authorities. This is especially frustrating for my residents in Hailfin, where one side of the street is MPT and the other half is in Swansea. What exactly are my residents getting for this extra money? I fully support this amendment and I support my constituents and would urge all councillors to do the same. Diolchfaer. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, would you like to respond to the last point about uh, what value of money are people receiving? Sorry, what what value of services in terms of money people are receiving? Um, well, the the council uh, provides some six hundred odd uh, different uh, services to the public, um, and. Uh, that covers uh, the range from uh, registration from uh, when babies are born all the way through to registrations of death and all services in between. Uh, I think uh, most residents um, uh, believe that uh, the amount of services that the council provides is uh, very limited. Uh, that isn't true. Um, you, we provide education uh, from uh, age three uh, through to uh, 18. We, we provide uh, significant uh, amounts of visible services through environment. We're providing regeneration. We are providing a huge uh, amount of services in social care. And I think that in terms of uh, the proposals that are uh, considered um, and been highlighted by members uh, today, I think the issue around um, the use of reserves, and I think the part that the, quest, the question hasn't uh, um, uh, been sort of uh, dealt with uh, so far, is that we're talking about um, a pull from general reserves this year um, of 5.2 uh, million uh, uh, proposed uh, uh, as part of the amendment. Um, and I think the question was, well, in 22-23, what services are we then wanting to actually reduce to cover the fact that that 2.2 million extra isn't in the base budget? Because um, we're, I'm thinking about the sustainability of the council going forward for the next five, ten years, not just uh, tomorrow. And I think that in terms of uh, um, in the report in front of members today, what I have said is that the medium term financial plan for the council uh, uh, has to start work in the spring, which will require input from all councillors on what their uh, priorities are and how the activity of the council is going to actually be managed to deliver the services, if you wish, at a lower cost to the taxpayer, then you have to take something out from April 22 onwards. Uh, I totally understand what Councillor Llewellyn is saying. Um, uh, the the uh, amendment is not proposing uh, uh, um, any impact on the taxpayer um, uh, or on services in 21-22, but it's got a huge impact on the sustainability of this council going forward from April 22 and um, the external auditor 
will be asking the council to actually identify what it's going to do to have a sustainable long term uh, uh, budget strategy. And at the moment, as Section 151 officer, that is one of the reasons and one of the issues that I did highlight uh, as part of the budget uh, uh, reports that you have to bear in mind when you take all of these issues into account in setting the overall budget, because it's a mixture of activities and money. It's not one or the other. You can't have both in the long term. You have to manage it uh, properly going forward. So hopefully that gives a, an overview, uh, 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 Mr. Mayor, of some of the complexities of the issues that you're having to consider today, and you will have to make the final determination on when you take the uh, decision on the budget. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. We've got four remaining speakers uh, who's advocated they wish to speak. It'll be Councillor Peter Rees, followed by Councillor Aubrey, then Councillor Hugh Jones, then Councillor Hale, and I'm going to pull in the Cabinet member then to, to sum up before I invite Mr. Craig Griffiths, Head of Legal, to take us through the remaining processes. Uh, Councillor Peter Rees, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you very much. Um, to have a, a, a reserve in our budget is essential. We have provided a, a, a sustainable council over the last 25 years. Every year in that time, Plaid Cymru have asked, have requested a pull on reserves year after year. Uh, and that would, that would have meant that we would have deleted our reserves long ago. The strategy that we provided of a sustainable uh, council has served the residents of Neathport Talbot well under a Labour ad 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 administration. One thing that has asked that no one has mentioned in this debate, debate today is Brexit and the lack of European funding that could result and the unintended consequences of job losses, etc., which will have a, a, a immense pull on our social services budgets, etc. Now that that has got to be taken into account. We need that reserve to meet those those uh, those consequences. That's an that's an issue that uh, that Councillor Nigel Hunt didn't mention. The fact that there are other dangers on the horizon. We need this reserve. I would urge all our councillors to support the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Rees. Councillor Aubrey, please. Thank you. I think most councillors understand what is written in Councillor Llewellyn's um, amendment, but what Councillor Llewellyn hasn't done is produced detailed information of how his proposal is going to be financially sustainable and say that he won't cut any services. Because where would we be if we kept taking money out of reserves and we have another emergency like the one in Skewin or the landslide? What will we do then? Where will the money be coming from? Thank you, Councillor Aubrey. Councillor Hugh Jones, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would just like to say we've recently had a public consultation going out to the offices of the public, and following the consultation, the vast feedback was the concern with the council tax price and increase. Um, Neath the Batal, but is one of the poorest areas of Wales, the third highest council tax in Wales. Why is the point of the council running a public consultation? Well, we are not listening to the public. The public yeah, have said true. about the council tax increase. How can we, as councillors, as civil servants of the public, not listen to the public? Year on year, we're the highest council tax, or one of the highest council tax in Wales. It is about time we change this. For once, let's stick to the public consultation and let's give the public what they want. 
Thank you. Thank you. The last speaker before I call in the cabinet member to sum up, followed by then the deputy leader. Um, Councillor Jo Hale, please. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, mine's mine is just a, a, a brief statement. Uh, I just uh, want to say that, you know, this last year has been um, Anis Horribilis. Um, the world has suffered horrifically, um, as in East Put Put Albert included. Please can we show some compassion for our council taxpayers and freeze the council tax after this horrendous year we have all endured. This is more than a rainy day. It's a torrential downpour that has not yet ceased. Let's be a caring council and show our council taxpayers we care and put a freeze on council tax. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hill. Calling upon the cabinet member for finance, please. M Mr Mayor, could I beg your indulgence? Could I speak before the cabinet member? I just want to come back on one point. Certainly, Deputy Leader. Much obliged to you. Thank you. Um, reference has been made by uh, both Councillor Rebecca Phillips and Councillor Anthony Richards. Uh, about the neighbouring authority in Carmarthen uh, and what do they get that the residents in Neath Port Talbot don't get. Uh, an earlier reference was made to a neighbouring authority the other side of the county borough, uh, i.e. Bridgend. Um, as far as refuse and recycling is concerned, Mr Mayor, uh, the residents of Carmarthen are restricted to three black bags of refuse per fortnight. There is no glass collection in Carmarthen and they pay either £45 up front or £52 in instalments to have the green waste collected. The residents in Neath Port Talbot get theirs done as part of their council tax payment. And as far as Bridgend are concerned, Mr. Mayor, the residents in Bridgend are subject to a four weekly refuse collection, which is outsourced to a private company. The residents of Neath Port Talbot get a far better service than that. It's just a point I wanted to make on the two points raised, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Point, point of order, Mr. Mayor. Deputy Leader, yeah, have you finished? Thank you. Point Sorry. Of order, yeah. yeah, OK. OK, um, I'm I'm now going to call upon no. uh, Councillor Alan Llewellyn uh, uh, for his right can to... I raise to... A point? Can I raise a point of order, Mr Mayor? Yeah, who's speaking? Sorry. Uh, Councillor Anthony Richards. Yeah, Councillor Richards. Um, Councillor C uh, Clement Williams uh, mentioned to me in my address that she raised a point of order on the fact that I was... Um, making references to Carmarthenshire uh, County Council. Um, the uh, leader or deputy leader or whatever position um, uh, Councillor Latham is in now um, has also done the same. So I want to know um, why is it not acceptable for me to raise uh, information with regards to Carmarthenshire, but it's OK for him to mention neighbouring authorities if we are debating and Neath Port Talbot Council, just um, just so that we've got consistency in the procedures today. Can I respond to that point of order, Mr uh, Mayor? To, to, to two seconds, uh, uh, Cabinet Member. I'm going to call in Mr Griffiths on this point in, in terms of points of order from both aspects. OK, thank you, um, Mr Mayor. I think it's important, obviously, looking back at the question that Councillor Richards asked, he was entitled to do comparisons, obviously, with other authorities. I think when he started referencing names of individual members and other authorities, I might have perhaps stepped in a little bit there. But ultimately, it is OK to have questions raised about other authorities to compare how it affects NPT-related services in the results. So as long as if the focus remains on NPT, I think that's ultimately acceptable going forward. If, if, uh, I could, but, if I could respond, Councillor Richards if I could asked respond, me Mr. to Mayor. comment on their decision, and that is not what I'm here for. Yeah, I didn't make any reference to any names. I did give their position, and I. Oh, I'm sorry. I sorry, Councillor Richards. I thought you yeah. said a name. Yeah, I didn't give any names. Thanks. Right of reply, Councillor Alan Llewellyn. The Cabinet member is then going to sum up and I move in progress then to the head of legal services. Councillor Llewellyn. Yeah, yes, th th thanks, Mayor. I, I didn't intend to come back in, but it, it's just that there, there are still members asking the same question as I was asked 
you know, several times earlier in the debate. And, uh, you know, so I didn't, I didn't intend making this a point again. But, but you know, if the members, you know, I have, I have a feeling, to be honest, that, um, you know, there are members that haven't changed the script during the course of the debate. And, and, you know, so I will make it quite clear that our amendment will, it's addressing the 2021 to 22 budget is based on our current levels of reserves and budget and the proposals before this. It's not uh, hypothetical about what's happening beyond then. And it's affordable, it's costed, and it is relevant to extraordinary times that our people uh, in Neath Talbot are, are, are going through. It will not cost jobs, it will not cost services, but it will help all of the people of Neath Talbot. Um, so, I, 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 you know, unless, unless I get asked the same question again that I've been asked about six or seven times during this debate, I, I, I leave it there, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Llewellyn. I'm going to call upon the Cabinet member to sum up now before I call in the Head of Legal Services, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just for clarity, my point of order was because he asked me to condemn another uh, councillor and I'm not doing that. Um, or to comment on their decision. Um, I, uh, we were also asked what services we were, uh, they were providing that we weren't or vice versa and therefore reference to other councils, but it was mainly about the fact that I was asked to make comment on other council decisions and that is not what I am here for. Um, uh, on a specific person, sorry. Okay, um, I would like to align myself first of all with the comments of Councillor Hunt in his condolences mentioned to all people, um, resident staff, wherever they may be throughout the world, um, especially MPT for us, of course, on anyone who has lost relatives or been affected by um, this terrible, terrible disease that has been ravaging the, the globe. Um, and I would also like to remind you that I will be asking for a recorded vote um, on this uh, item. I'd like to um, pick up on some things um, in response to much of what has been said today. If I forget anything, there's an awful lot. But let me start with the level of council tax. 80% of our residents are band B. They pay um, less than the band E average across Wales. The 2.75% rise, which has been um, put forward by us, is £34.56. It's my understanding that all of the Plaid Cymru or, or most of the Plaid Cymru councillors would like to have a 0% pay rise because our residents can't afford a rise. Can I just point out to everyone the Community Council pay, uh, raises this year? Estlavera, Plaid Run, 3.89%. That's more than 2.75 and it's more than naught. That's an extra payment on top of the £30.20 of £8.56. Pontedawi, Plaid Run, 5.4%. That's an extra £7.49 on top. Wine Kagerwen, 15.48%. Hang on, I thought they wanted zero. £24.12 on top. And Cunclinveth, another Plaid Run, 3.88. That's £3.76 more. But nobody, nobody is anywhere near Blangrach. Plaid Run, 31.45%. That's an extra £30.20, pence, almost doubling their council tax. So tell me now, how can you be asking for extra money to run local services when we are providing the support throughout the borough on a vast amount of work that we do. Mm, interesting that. 
Pembrokeshire, the lowest council tax. But what services do they have? They took the decision years and years ago. They couldn't afford it. They weren't going to charge any more council tax. Their services are not in comparison with ours. Um, yeah, Councillor Richard, I have no problem with comparing what we do to other councils, and I think I've just covered that off. I'm, I'm just going through a list of some of the things I've made notes on. We've been told that we haven't listened to the conference consultation. Well, I beg to differ. We've we've reduced it by a whole one percent, which is seven eight hundred thousand pounds. That's a lot of money. Uh, but we have felt that with the feeling out there, we would work and we have worked to make that happen and reduce it. Um, I'll go back to the things that I that I'd already uh, written up before I ran out of space. OK, so how I yesterday made mention of um, a piece of work then or an article written by uh, Rob Whiteman. He is the chief executive of SIPFA. It's the Chartered Institute for Public Finance. Um, I can't remember how well. Uh, accountants. <laughs> it's I'll read uh, if you bear my, beg my indulgence, Mr. Mayor, this is really important point and we have been we've been told here that we can use our reserves and it would be the right thing to do. Rob says. It's more a case of saying well done to the many than told you so to the few. But in if in recent weeks have not put paid forever to the foolishness of raiding reserves to balance day to day spending, then nothing will. SIPFA always advises once you spend them, they are gone. Local authorities have experienced often massive cuts to their budgets and councils have been sensible to seek to replenish their reserves where they can. However, at a time when local authorities have experienced devastating cuts to their budgets, they're not being replenished to the extent that is needed. Dipping further into reserves for anything but emergencies leaves councils vulnerable to financial shocks. We've now entered such one shock. The instinct of many councils not to plunder their reserve, reserves over recent years have been entirely vindicated by the arrival of this most rainy of rainy days. Coronavirus is going to place an unparalleled strain on local government services, such as public health, social care, as all public services work alongside the NHS during this medical emergency. A recent letter from NHS England to NHS trusts outlined the need to urgently discharge all hospitals. This was written last year. Um, but um, inpatients medically fit to leave. For those needing social care emergencies, legislation will ensure eligibility assessments do not delay discharge, meaning a sharp uptake in demand. Unprecedented though it may be, this is exactly the kind of unexpected financial shock reserves are designed to help councils absorb. So while right now we must deal with the present crisis, I implore both government and the public alike to always in future consider the valuable role of reserves. Encourage councils to be building their reserves up rather than spending them down. You never know when that rainy day will come. Um, I have to say, I, I feel that um, although this was written last year, it's very pertinent and we will continue to have um, demand on our services because we're still in this crisis. That's what he had to say. The advice he's given there is also the advice I'm getting from our very experienced director of finance and his team. Both Howell and Hugh are chartered public finance accountants with years of experience between them. Audit, Audit Wales also understands the importance of reserves and that is why they recommend the council keeps three to five percent of its annual budget in reserves. 
to cover emergency situations. For example, the flooding in Skewin, COVID, uh, the steelworks, if anything should happen there, uh, we may be called upon our reserves for that. And the landslide in the Slavera, Councillor Llewellyn's ward. What happens if that slips again and there's no money left in the reserves to cover it, as well as still recovering from, from COVID? I'd love, I'd love to be able to increase council tax, uh, not increase council tax uh, at all this year. We've listened to the responses we have. We've re tried to find a balance of use of reserves and raising council tax um, at Bandy, and we think that using 3.1 million and out of reserves and 2.75 million council tax rise to be a fair balance. Using over 5 million out of reserves in one year would mean that we are spending 25 or quarter of our council tax reserves in one year if this amendment is agreed. Using an extra 2.2 million from reserves this year will reduce the amount of monies over the next five years. From April 2022, it would mean over 10 million over the following five years. Would a 25% uh, reduction be sustainable in helping deliver quality services to our registered uh, residents over the next five years? No. We all want council tax to be lower, but the only way to do this would be to reduce our costs. Audit Wales would say that to use that amount in one year would mean we would need to pull it back within um, it within year next year. Uh, not all of it, but especially if it was 25%. And that would mean cuts in services or threats to uh, taking in mind the uh, calculation that Howell has made that it will cost us over the next five years 20 teachers' posts or 45 council staff on the average wage or services. So this is why, Councillor Llewellyn, I am asking you what it is you're going to cut next year to pull it back. Yes, we could do it this year, but then we're leaving ourselves open and vulnerable. Council tax table looks at Bandy as average. I think we've already been there and we've mentioned the 80% um, on Bandy in East Port Talbot. It's been mentioned MPT Council as the highest council tax in Wales over the last couple of meetings, but I, I'm glad that you finally got it with those. It's still too high, I admit, but over the last five years, our council tax rise has been the second lowest in Wales and over 6% less than the average. This has helped to bring our council tax levels down. It was highest from 2003-04, this is as far back as my figures go I'm afraid, to 6-7. As far as I'm aware there was a conscious decision of both parties at the time not to cut services. Uh, or all parties I should say, I'm sorry. The second highest from 2000, uh, we were the second highest from 2007 8 and sustained that until 2018 19. Uh, uh, sorry, until 17 18. In 2018 19, we fell to third. This shows a very serious and conscious effort by this administration to try to close the gap to other councils. I would urge anyone who's struggling to pay council tax or who comes to you as councillors to say that they are struggling contact the council straight away. We have CTRS council tax support and we have services here to help people claim any benefits that they may need. We put in an, an extra half a million pound into the council tax support scheme. So for those saying that people can't afford it, if they genuinely cannot afford it, there are safeguards there for them. In yesterday's meeting, it was mentioned that the rising council tax would be unfair on high street businesses who have to pay business rates. The Welsh Minister for Finance has, has already announced they will not actually be required to pay business rates next year. This coming year, I'm coming to the end, Chair, uh, thank you for your indulgence. This coming year, we'll be, we'll be in recovery from COVID, a second wave. There are many, many unknowns. That means the sustainability is in question moving forward into the next five years. Using a quarter of our reserves will leave us with very little wiggle room. We'll need to invest in our recovery and this money would not be in the base budget. So that means another call on our reserves. This is without Brexit implications and any pay raises 
over 1% that we have put into the base budget. Um, the trade unions are asking for 10, which will be another demand on our reserves. And as I touched on, steel industry is very shaky uh, at the moment, and we don't know what demands on our services that we may be facing moving forward. If we were to use 25% of our reserves, we'll be challenged that we've mismanaged our residence fund. Chancellor has already said they cannot continue to fund things the way they have been. We will have to tighten our purses soon to pull it back. The Prime Minister has also stated recently, in recent weeks, Council should not rely on Treasury support. The settlement for the next year is a pretty good one given the circumstances. We need to use our reserves to prepare for a very difficult financial climate in the future. We need a sustainable budget to run a sustainable council moving forward. And I and my colleagues are listening to the professional advice given by SIPFA and our rele relevant qualified officers. Please support the motion, Chair. Thank you, Cabinet Member. I received a further uh, seven indications from members. I think we've had a fair and frank discussion in terms of this particular item. I'm mindful that we've got uh, a lot more business ahead of us as well. I think I've been quite fair, you know, cross party allowing various uh, members, some uh, being over the normal time scales um, in terms of the amount of time they're allowed to speak. Uh, and of course, making sure that uh, representatives of, of, of political parties from the cabinet member to uh, leader of the opposition, Councillor Llewellyn, and Councillor Steve Hunt, representing the political groups, have given it a good airing. So, uh, at this moment, so apologies, you know, that I can't bring anybody else in at this moment in time. Uh, that being said, I'm now going to call upon Mr. Craig Griffiths, Head of Legal Services, to take us through the council process before council considers recommendation uh, agenda item seven on page 95 of the report. So I'm calling upon uh, Mr mm. Griffiths, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just before I begin, if I can ask all members to go where their electronic hands, I'll be asking you to do certain things during the course of the, the next um, couple of points. So just to make sure that we're starting from a, a sort of fresh, but that's great. Thank you very much. So, Councillor Hwellen, I understand that you've indicated you would wish a recorded vote on this matter. So for your amendment, we would need nine members to request a recorded vote. So that's one sixth of the number present here today. So in the first instance, can I ask for a proposal and second for the recorded vote, please? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to. Um, uh, I would like to request a recorded vote. And a second, please. I second. Thank you very much. Um, so, therefore, could I ask all members who wish a recorded vote of the amendment if they could just raise their electronic hands initially, please? Um, Mr. Chair, I've already called for a recorded vote, and um, uh, so I, I think could... I'd like to move that as well. If I could come in briefly be here, Councillor Cameron, because it's Councillor Hwellen's amendment, he's called for a recorded vote on that amendment. Oh, okay, You'd right. be entitled to call a recorded vote on the substantive motion, Thank whatever you. that would be down the line. That's great. So I've got a phone number of members here to confirm a recorded vote can be called. Um, so Councillor Hwellen, can I formally ask you to put your amendment, please? Yes, uh, th thank you. Th thank you. Uh, I was having some difficulty unmuting myself there. Um, yes, I, I'll, I'll propose. Um, I won't read the, the full That's amendment. Uh, members will be pleased to, to, to know. We, we, we've had that discussion and there, there will be things that will be replying to outside of the meeting that have been raised about things like mm -hmm. the community council and so on. Um, you know, I, I won't try to extend that now. I will just read the, the relevant part of the amendment, uh, amendment which is um, paragraph 4 that's been circulated, uh, that Council Tax 2021-22, that's a 21-21, sorry, 21-22 band D equivalent for Neath but Talbot County Borough Council will be £1,615.59, pence, resulting in no increase in Council Tax as opposed to 2.75% increase as detailed in the report, mm -hmm. with a gap of 2.75% being funded from the general reserve, representing an additional sum of 2.14 million be taken for, for 2021-22. Uh, 
Therefore, the total amount of general reserves needed to balance the budget is 5.24 million, i.e. 3.1 million per original report plus 2.14 million. The resulting general reserves balance would be 14.72 million, which is 4.69% of the revenue budget. Thank you very much, Councillor Huelan. Um, could I have a second to that amendment, please? I'll second. Thank you, Councillor Purcell. So the Democratic Services Officer will now want to take a roll call of all members, and I would ask if you could confirm during that whether you're voting for, against, or of abstaining from the recommendation. And once that roll call is complete, I'll review the results from that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I will go through the roll call now. Councillor Aubrey. For, against, or are you abstaining? Against. Against. Councillor Bamsey. I am voting for. You. Councillor Causey. Against. Councillor Clark. For. Councillor Clement Williams. Against. Councillor Crowley. Against, Jane. Thank you. Councillor Arthur Davis. Against. Again. Councillor Nicola Davis. Against. Councillor Oliver Davis. Against. Councillor Ross Davis. Obliged. Four. Thank you. Councillor Colin Edwards. For the amendment. Councillor Jamie Evans. Oblied. For. Councillor Freegard. Against. Councillor Galsworthy. Against. Councillor Griffiths, Winford Griffiths. For. Councillor Joe Hale. Against. Councillor oh, Sean sorry. Harry. No, sorry, for. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Councillor Sean Harris. Against. <clears throat> Councillor Mike Harvey. Against. Councillor Nigel Hunt. Councillor Nigel Hunt. Obliged for. Sorry, I didn't. For. for. Councillor Steve Hunt. Against Jane. Thank you. Councillor Hurley. Against. Thank you. Councillor Chris James. Against. Councillor Hugh James. Against Jane. Councillor Chris Jones. Against Jane. <laughs> Councillor Doreen Jones. Against. Councillor Hugh Jones. For Jane. Councillor Jane Jones. Against. Councillor Leanne Jones. Against Jane. Councillor Scott Jones, Mr Mayor. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor <coughs> Dennis Keogh. Against. Councillor Latham. Against Jen. Councillor Llewellyn. Obliged for. <coughs> Councillor Lockyer. <coughs> Against Jane. Councillor McGrath. Against Jane. Councillor Miller, John Miller. Against. Councillor Sandra Miller. Councillor Sa Sandra Miller. Against. Thank you. Councillor Ridian Meisen. And I'd have been against. Councillor Paddison. Against. Councillor Penry. Against. Councillor Peters, Martin Peters. 
Councillor Rebecca Phillips. Obliged. Four. Uh, Mark Prothero. Against. Councillor Purcell. Four. Councillor Percy. Against. Councillor Harman. Against. Councillor Peter Rees. Against Jane. Councillor so Renya Renkes. Against. Councillor Reynolds. Against. Councillor AJ Richards. Obliged for. Councillor PD Richards. Against Jane. Councillor Marcia Spooner. For. Obliged. Councillor AJ Taylor. Against. Councillor Rachel Taylor. Against. Councillor Warman. Against. Councillor Whitelock. Against. Thank you, Jane. Councillor Chris Williams. For oh, Jane. Councillor Wingrave. Against Jane. Councillor Wood. Against. And Councillor Woolcock. Against. Right. Okay. Thank you, members. We'll just tag in up the results now and I'll confirm the result in due course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Sorry to keep you waiting, members. So the total number in favour of the recommendation was 16. The total number against was 42. The number of abstentions was one. So therefore, that amendment has ultimately failed on this occasion. So as a result now of that member failing, I return to the recommendation in the council papers today. Now, again, I understand that there's an indication for a recorded vote on this particular element. And as mentioned, it will be nine members. So can I ask again for a proposal for a recorded vote on this particular motion, please? I propose, Chair. And can I have a second, please? Yes, uh, uh, I second that. Thank you very much both. And again, could I just ask members to raise their electronic hands if they're in favour of a uh, recorded vote? Thank you very much. The number has been obtained so we can um, move on to the next stage. So could I ask therefore for a proposal of the recommendation as set out in the council papers, please? Uh, I move, Mr Mayor. And a seconder, please. I second, Mr Mayor. I don't think there's any need for me to say anything. Thank you very much. So the Democratic Services Officer, well, Jane will now call a roll call again, and I would ask members to confirm if they're voting for, against, or confirm an abstention for the recommendation based in the Council papers, please. Okay. Councillor Aubrey, are you for, against, or are you abstaining? <coughs> for. <coughs> Councillor Bamsey. Uh, voting against, Jane. Thank you. Councillor Causey. For. <coughs> Councillor Clark. Against. Councillor Clement Williams. Four. Councillor Crowley. Four, Jane, thank you. Councillor Arthur Davis. Four. Councillor Nicola Davis. Abstain, Councillor Nicola Jane. Davis. Abstain, Jane. Right, OK, thank you. Councillor Oliver Davis. Four. Councillor Ros Davis. Councillor Ros. Ben. Against. Thank you. Councillor Carlin Edwards. Against. Thank you. Councillor Jamie Evans. An Ben. Against. Councillor Freegard. Four. Councillor Galsworthy. Councillor Galsworthy. Four. Councillor uh, Wyndham Griffiths. Against. Councillor Joe Hale. 
Against, Jane. Councillor Sean Harris. Four. Councillor Mike Harvey. Four, Jean. Councillor Nigel Hunt. Good evening. Against, Jean. Councillor Steve Hunt. Four, Jane. Thank you. Councillor uh, Jeremy Hurley. Four, Jane. Thank you. Councillor Chris James. Four. Councillor Hugh James. Four, Jane. Councillor Chris Jones. Four, Jane. Councillor Doreen Jones. Four, Jane. Councillor Hugh Jones. Definitely against. Councillor Jane Jones. Abstain. Councillor Leanne Jones. Four, Jane. You. Councillor Scott Jones. Abstain. Councillor Dennis Keogh. I'm four. Councillor uh, Edward Latham. Four, Jane. Councillor Alan Llewellyn. I know I've been Jane against. Councillor Lockyer. Four, Jane. Councillor McGrath. Four, Jane. Councillor Miller, John Miller. Four. Councillor Sandra Miller. Four. Thank you. Councillor Ridian Meisen. Four. Councillor Paddison. Four. Councillor Pendry. Four, Jane. Thank you. Councillor Martin Peters. Against. Councillor Rebecca Phillips. And Ed Byrne against. Councillor Prothero. For Jane. Councillor Purcell. Against. Councillor Percy. For. Councillor Rahman. For. Councillor Peter Rees. Councillor Peter Jane. Rees. Thank Four, you. Jane. Thank you. Councillor Renkis. Four. Councillor Reynolds. Four. Councillor Anthony Richards. And Erbin against. Thank you. Councillor Peter Richards. Four. Against. Four, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Marcia Spooner. And Erbin against. Councillor AJ Taylor. Four. Councillor Rachel Taylor. Four. Councillor John Warman. Four. Councillor Whitelock. Four, thank you, Jen. Councillor Chris Williams. Against Jen. Councillor Wingrave. Four, Jen. Councillor Wood. Four. And Councillor Woolcock. Four. Thank you. Thank you, members. We'll just tag you those results now and I'll confirm them to you momentarily. <clears throat>
Yeah. Sorry to keep you waiting then, members. So we have the total number in favour being 39, the total number against 17, the number of abstentions three. So that recommendation is now therefore passed on that agenda item. So I'll hand back now to Mr Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr Griffiths. OK, we'll therefore move to agenda item eight, Treasury Management Strategy 2021 to 2022. Uh, can I now call upon Mr. Raoul Jenkins, Head of Finance and Corporate Services, to introduce the report, please? Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, as members can see, this report is set out on page 145 onwards and basically pulls together the uh, considerations we've had on uh, the revenue budget and capital budget. As we need to uh, borrow monies, we have got to uh, uh, repay that uh, uh, monies and we have got investment uh, arrangements that we need to manage all our cash flows uh, in terms of budget setting for, for next year. So this report was considered and uh, scrutinised uh, uh, by uh, Cabinet uh, uh, yesterday. It's uh, uh, similar um, reports that we produce annually and I'm happy to take any questions, should there be any from uh, uh, members, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Jenkins. Councillor Alan Llewellyn. Yeah, yes, uh, Mr Mayor, just, just very briefly, I mean, it's a question that I raised at Scutin yesterday, but uh, obviously we're in a different forum now, and I, I'm, I'm just asking about a commentary from the Director of Finance about the current um, predictions for inflationary rates um, during this year from the Bank of England and the Office of Budget Responsibility, the OBR, and, and where that leaves us in terms of the value of the investments that we have uh, listed and in the Treasury Management Report that's just been presented. Thank you. Mr Jenkins. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, the um, prospects for interest uh, rates are shown on uh, page 152 of the report um, and that was the position uh, when we wrote the report. As you can see, the bank base rate is uh, expected to be low all the way through to uh, June 22 with various uh, uh, interest rates for um, loans. That changes uh, on a daily basis and uh, the position is that there was a, a news flash earlier today uh, suggesting that the uh, cost of uh, future borrowings will increase now following the Chancellor's budget uh, last week. But in terms of the arrangements, the likelihood is that for uh, borrowings of 50 years uh, or more, the interest rates is around 1.9 percent and the uh, in investment interest that we can get on short term investments is about the 0.1% that is mentioned um, in, in the table in the report. Uh, the overall Treasury management budget should be able to absorb that uh, um, fluctuation uh, in, into uh, next year. And whilst inflation at the moment is running uh, uh, relatively low at um, uh, less than 1%, the Bank of England target to, to try and monitor and control prices is around the 2% and that is the target for uh, uh, the forthcoming years. But all of that uh, shouldn't have a, a, a major impact on our budget next year, but if it should, then we will uh, review how that impacts on the Treasury Management Reserve uh, in uh, during the uh, financial year, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I've received received no further indication from members, so therefore can I refer members to recommendation on page 161 of the report? Uh, can I have a proposal, please? I move, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And a second. I second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Members, can I advise uh, that uh, if you do not indicate to the contrary, that will be assumed that you're in favour of the recommendation that is set out. Uh, can I ask Jane to confirm that that's the case, please? I can see no indications, Mr Mayor, to the contrary, so that recommendation is approved. Thanks very much, Jane. OK, members, we'll therefore move on to agenda item nine, Council Tax 2021 
to 2022. Can I again call Mr Howell Jenkins, Head of Finance and Corporate Services, to introduce the report, please? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. This is uh, uh, the, the final report on the suite of uh, budget matters in front of uh, Council today. Um, you will see there that uh, it takes account of the decision that was made uh, earlier in terms of setting uh, the council's council tax at £1,660.02. Uh, it takes account of the community council uh, preset notifications that the council has received. It takes account of the uh, pre uh, precept notice received from the uh, 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 Police and Crime Commissioner for South Wales. Um, and uh, in paragraph 2.2, you will note that uh, it is recommended this year, as has been in every other year, that all the expenses incurred by the uh, county borough in delivering its uh, functions is uh, uh, performed across the whole of the county borough and the charges reflected uh, that way. So there are various statutory calculations uh, there set out in, in the paper. But the uh, uh, total value of council tax for each community uh, area uh, is set out in Appendix 3 to the report and the recommendations lead you to uh, uh, confirming all the details ending up in that particular uh, uh, appendix, which is set out on page 179 of today's papers, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Jenkins. Councillor Alan Llewellyn, please. Yeah, I just Mr. Mayor. I'm coming back uh, really on a question that was posed. <laughs> I seem to have a lot of questions posed to me this afternoon. Uh, it was posed to me by the um, uh, cabinet member for finance um, in the earlier debate, but referring specifically to um, council tax levels from community councils, which obviously is what we're looking at now in this particular report. Um, first of all, there were a number of inaccuracies in what the cabinet member said um, about Quaker um, Gingham and Council being applied, controlled, Kuntilbert's Council being applied, controlled. I mean, that's you know, just not the case. You know, look it up, do your homework. Sorry, cabinet member. Uh, but um, the other point is, obviously, that the the the, the the community, the community council precept that's raised by community councils is almost a hundred percent of what they have to. Councillor Llewellyn, you frozen. Right, I'm at, right. I'll start again. I do apologise. Right, uh, uh, I, I was muted. Right, I'm coming back on the. It is to do with this particular report because it's to do with the community council precepts that are included in this report. I'm uh, referring back to the question that was put back to me by the cabinet member for finance um, about community council levels and particularly those that are raised by um, uh, applied uh, councils. There are a number of inaccuracies in what the uh, cabinet member said for a start. Uh, Gwankagirwen Council and Cumtinville Council are not led by Plaid Cymru. So I'd invite the cabinet member to do a homework on, on, on that. Um, and also, in general terms, the Community Council precept, which is reported in this report here, is more or less 100% of what the Community Councils have to spend to maintain their services. Uh, they don't have a 75% contribution from rate support grant as we do as a, as a county council. Um, so they do what they do, and, and, and you know, they're voluntary members, they're not paid as community councillors, they're voluntary members. Point of order, Mr Mayor, this has benefits. nothing to do with this report. Well, it is to do with this report because... No, it is, isn't. It, that is debate report. is over. This is point no, of order, Mr it, Mayor, we are no, not... We are not what's, the, what's, the, what's the point of order then? Okay. Member, what's your point of order? Councillor Reese. The point what, what, of order is we, this this is not a, de, a debate about count, uh, the precepts of councillors. This is a report for this council. And you have no right that that debate has already gone. So I would suggest that it, you rule, Mr. Mayor, that it's out of order. 
Mr Griffiths. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think if the question relates to obviously the information that is included in paragraph 4.4 of this particular report, obviously a question can be asked specifically on it. If it's in relation, obviously, to the more general picture, shall we say, of community council reserves, then obviously it does sit outside of this question. So I think I would just ask Councillor Howell and if he can elaborate what the question ultimately is in that regard, just so we can work out whether it is within the scope here of the agenda item. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Llewellyn, if you can focus more on the question, please, on, on this recommendation. Councillor Llewellyn, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. I, 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 I muted myself, you know, when a couple of members coming in there. Yeah, if we can focus, if we can fo focus to this report, please, Councillor Llewellyn. Councillor Llewellyn, you're on mute again. I don't know what's happening. Actually. I think it's muting itself. Um, all right. I, mean, it, I think it's all right. Is it all right for now? It is yeah, for okay. now. If if you can yeah, stick okay, to yeah. the point on to the particular uh, yes. agenda item, please. I'll, I'll, I'll further the question. I'll ask for confirmation. Um, bearing in mind what the cabinet member said earlier, that community councils do not receive 75% of their funding through their support grant as we do as a as a as a, uh, a county council and therefore have to raise more or less 100 percent of their funding through the precept and can i also ask if it is the case that community councils um have taken on a number of services that have been cut by us as a county council in order to keep them going in the community because we have cut them out of our budget in the last few years. And can I also ask if it's the case that the cabinet member for finance was very derogatory about some community councils earlier on in the, in the discussion, does not actually have a community council in her area, and therefore she will not be familiar with the work that they have to do on behalf of their communities. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Llewellyn. I'm sure the relevant cabinet member will respond in due course. Um, can I call upon the director of finance? Yeah, yes, thank, th thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I think that um, the this is a technical report to finalise the council tax. Um, it isn't uh, a, a, an issue that uh, requires debate. The individual precept uh, has been notified to the council by the individual uh, community councils um, and, and I'm only trying to uh, finalise the council tax setting process uh, by uh, asking you to and council to consider this particular report as, as uh, set out. Uh, Mr Mayor, it it's, uh, isn't really a debate around what the community councils do or 